Thanks, Army. Hi, everybody. Hey, we're all ready for round two. In fact, you really need a program to know the players. Two new trucks. One is the Dungeon of Doom, Eric Tack, in this Ford powered with the uh, GTS fiberglass body. And also new, we have the War Wagon, 1955 Chevy Nomad. Jeff Cook comes out of northern Indiana. Unfortunately, both trucks were defeated in round one. However, this one comes back as a fast loser for round two competition. There, there was the time for Brian Welsh. The Dungeon of Doom, Eric Tack against Fred Schaefer in Barefoot. Of course, Fred did not fare so well in the uh, Dodge Monster Drags last season. Would like to redeem himself here in the Dome. And the round one win went to Fred Schaefer. But Eric Tack, as we told you earlier, will come back as a fast loser. The 380 for Eric and Fred Schaefer's clocking was a 353. The, well, the Dodge big... Monster Drags. Well, Gary, what we're looking at right now is the brand new F-150 Ford body style just being released for the public to see the first time. Of course, Eric Meager on board the new uh, Bigfoot truck as we take a look at the uh, pairings now for round two. The two fast losers coming back, the Executioner and Dungeon of Doom. So there is Eric Tack in the brand new Dungeon of Doom truck. I like that fiberglass body. You know, the fiberglass body here, there's a story. A fellow named George Link owns a company called GTS Fiberglass out of Winsville, Missouri. And he uses these trucks as creative pieces for him. He's built this truck. He's built Snakebite. He's built uh, Samson. He works with the Bigfoot team. He's built the Dodge truck. So he is a creator in fiberglass. And some trouble in the shutdown area for Eric Meager. He's on the brakes. And talk about some fiberglass damage. Man, he clouded that outside wall. I think that's a metal doghouse on that truck, isn't it? He was road testing that new Ford front end, wasn't he, Gary? Is that fiberglass or metal? It's fiberglass. Oh, man. He uh, just simply, we talked about the short shutdown area. He simply could not get stopped. Had the big win. And the safety crew indicating that he apparently is okay. Now, let's watch again, Army. Right there, he has the big wheel stand over. That's what launched him. The second set of cars, he was wheel standing over that. Had trouble, high side of the truck, and then simply could not get all four down on the ground. He slams on the brakes, and then slams the outside retaining wall. That's why you got to hit the brakes only when you got four wheels on the ground. He was dotting the eye in Indianapolis. Well, there's a look at the damage to the front of that uh, Ford Bigfoot. But right now, more importantly, the driver's okay. He's with Army. Eric, you have any idea? You did what you had to do. I mean, you had to get it back down before you hit the brakes. That's right. It came up over top of me. I know I was running uh, low on space here. As you can see, we're indoors. We're still racing hard. Very competitive. Ford's not backing down. We're going to assess the damage. I don't see any real reason why we can't come back, but I really haven't looked at it yet. But uh, we're coming back. We're, hopefully, we're coming back real strong. Thanks for coming over. Get back to work. Thank you. Well, Eric took the football out of the end zone. The only problem is this is monster truck racing and not football. You know, the concrete gets real slick when it gets dusty, and that's exactly what happened. Had there been dirt all the way to that wall, he may have gotten that vehicle shut down. Of course, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't uh, you know the story. Fly. Well, he's trying to uh, assess the damage right now to see if they can get that truck uh, back in action. Now, take a look from the end zone camera. Right here in No Man's Land Army, he pulls the big wheel stand, and that tips the front end over. And once he gets up on two wheels, he cannot apply the brakes to get her slowed down. Now he's standing hard on the brakes. He simply runs out of space and makes some pretty good contact with that outside wall. And, of course, they'll have to use some plywood to cover up the hole before we can continue here in the RCA Dome in downtown Indianapolis. So a little low on the action as the uh, maintenance crew goes to work and... Repairs the outside uh, wall. Oh, the remedy actually you the broke dodge. something in that win over Fred Schaefer. He will not be able to continue, so Eric Tack in the Dungeon of Doom, the quickest loser from round two, will now race against Kurt Dabney in the final four. A luck, a bit of luck for this new truck. Well, a lot of luck, really, because he keeps coming back to the loser bracket, but when you go to the pay window... That doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there, but he's been knocked out now as Kirk Dabney, the overkill truck, takes the victory at 364. Half the field beat him tonight. The attack has lost everybody, but keeps coming back for some reason, either as a loser or somebody else breaks. Let's go down and visit with Kirk Dabney. Well, a different look for Eric Meager's Bigfoot truck following his brush with the uh, RCA Dome wall. Now, earlier, Army took a look at the fuel situation. 
Gary, we got a kind of unique view of the Bigfoot truck with the nose off here. And I want to point something out to you in the safety field. Look at the impact point. This is exactly where the truck made impact with the wall. And they'll only have to replace this part of the front of the truck. Push back about two or three inches. But the interesting thing is the fuel cell sitting right here. This jazz fuel cell did exactly what it was supposed to do. It took the impact. You can actually see where it, the, the frame pushed back into the fuel cell. But there was not one ounce of leakage that came out of this truck. That fuel cell did exactly what it was designed to do, contain the fuel in case of an impact. That, of course, is due to the bladder inside the fuel cell that all uh, motorsport vehicles now, uh, for the most part, are required to have. Well, it looks like that did not slow down the Bigfoot truck. Eric Meager takes the victory over Brian Welsh. So Eric Meager in the damaged Bigfoot will go to the final round. Let's take a look again, coming right at you. Well, Brian ran him tough, but the Cinderella story stopped right about here. On the second jump, Bigfoot was straight and really aired it out. Well, once again, Eric Meager, as we've seen so often, will be in the championship go. But right now, let's send it out trackside and visit with Eric. Well, it's not coming easy, but it is coming. You're right. They're coming off hard, but we're coming hard. What you just saw there was a credit not just to the team of uh, crew members we have here tonight. It's a credit all the way back to Bob Chandler and his computer when he sat down to put this truck together. You can tell this truck was built with safety in mind. I came out of it. I, I feel great after that win. Hopefully we'll have another win behind that, but definitely a credit to the team here and back in St. Louis. Well, Army, before we get to the finals, let's show you some more tough Our trucks. Congratulations to Barb Alt. Got her upside down, came back to win it all. We are set now for the finals. Kirk Dabney and Eric Meager. Two good friends until right now they're the worst enemies. They put their war paint on. Dabney needs the win. He wants it. It'll help him get a sponsor. Bigfoot team on the other side. Everybody knows the story about them. Who's it going to be, Gary? The pair of forge. It looks like Eric Meager by, I was going to say by the doghouse, but he has no doghouse. It's a 362. Eric Meager wins this invitational in the RCA Dome by just mere inches over the overkill Ford. A pair of Ford trucks in the championship. And it was right here where Eric moved out just oh, by the length of a wheel. And here is your champion. Well, Eric, you started tonight by thumping a wall, but you ended it by beating them all. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Army. It wasn't easy. It's getting tougher and tougher out here, pushing it to the limit. I can't thank everybody enough. The guys that are with me here, like I said, everybody has put their efforts into this vehicle to get it to where it is today. Uh, the great backing we have from our sponsors. I did notice I hit that wall pretty hard, but that deflector shield bug shield doesn't have a scratch on it. Well, congratulations to Eric Meager. A tough outing here last year, a tough outing early tonight, but he wins it for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week. Now, here's the boys, an exciting Jim, video. $60,000 at the end of this rainbow. There's been a lot of changes take place since we had the last time to get together. One of the major changes is last year's world champion, Dan Runty, who drove the Bigfoot Power Wheels to that national championship, is not in that truck. He's in another truck. It's out of the same stable of Bob Chandler's. He'll be driving the original Bigfoot Blue in competition this year. Runty says he can win that championship. That's one of the changes. Another change that I'm really happy to be involved with is a new co-host on the show out of central Iowa. Dave Reef is going to be working with me this year, and he's over in the pit area right now. Well, thanks, Army. I definitely look forward to working with you this season. We've already touched on driver changes, but how about a new truck? Behind me, you see the WCW Hulkster Mobile, driven by Eric Meager this season. Comes out of the Bob Chandler Racing Stable and features a beautifully crafted GTS fiberglass body and a big old Ford Hemi engine. Now, Steve Grissom has already taken the WCW sponsorship into the winner's circle, NASCAR in Daytona, back in February. Well, Bob Chandler says with Eric Meager, they'd love to add a pen to points belt to this Hulkster belt. Ledger. The well, Hulkster comes out. Now, the Hulkster, yeah, the same Hulkster all you kids like, teamed up with a winning combination out of the Bob Tanner shop. Going to play the game. You might as well step up and play with the big boys. They got Eric Meager as a driver. Meanwhile, in the other lane, the overkill truck, Kirk Dabney, a privateer, knows that he's got his work cut out for him. We'll send it down to Dave with Todd Froelich. You got to be there, Dan, if you're going to win. Truck closest to us, not that lucky last year, demolishing this race. I wonder if he's worried about a little deja vu. Meager a little sideways coming over the jump, but he hits the line first. And
a 494. So your second quick qualifier moving on to round number three is Kurt Dabney. He's a coming over two here, but he's going up against the defending Penda Points champion and Dan Running. He and the Bigfoot crew have been very, very busy this afternoon. No motor problems, just a new starter needed on the Bigfoot Ford. He and his crew, hard-hearted work. They got him ready, and he's back on the line. Meanwhile, sitting in the other lane, the guy, like the little train, he thinks he can beat the big guys. Far lane, four, power, big blue, big foot. Hall waits in the near lane. There's Sage. Big blue. Dan Runny in the fourth does it again. A 4.80. Very good run for Dan Runny. Dan Runny, last one up, showing that he can do exactly what he said. He's talking about it. Done, but let's check in with our views with Dan Runny. Dan, a 480 on a hard run. Those Hall brothers are coming around on you. They're coming around hard. You know, they're running the clutch. There's a lot of people going to clutches. We're still running a good old Ford C6. We owe a lot to that. Ford fire or Ford and the Firestone tires are working well here today. I can't say enough about that. We're just taking one run at a time. We're getting a little rattled here. We've had a couple little problems, and we'll get them straightened out and be in the final. The fans are well, straight out of semifinal action. We find Todd Froelich in the Dodge Rampage going up against that holster vehicle of Eric Meager. Also, you're looking at Ford Dodge, but you're looking at Corporate America. They realize they put their name on a winning vehicle where they say, you win on Sunday, you sell on Monday. Well, there's Ford's representative, the old Hulkster. And in the other lane is the man in black in this sport, the Dodge. And Todd's making a name for himself. Eric Meager doing a good job driving the Ford camp. You're looking at the evolution of the sport, Dave. Well, Eric Meager certainly got a good man in his corner in the Hulkster. He's already got a title belt without even running a race, but he's going to have to go hard here against Todd Froelich in the Dodge Rampage. Pretty equal off the start, but the Hulkster gets the job done over the second series of jumps. A 4.88 ET as Eric Meager moves on. But the big story is the Dodges will not be back. They fired all their shots. They missed their mark. He's going to be going into the trailer. One lady that did make it, though, the Boogie Band crew, they are going to be making it back. As a matter of fact, the Black Cloud stays over the Dodge team, we understand, Dave. And it looks like Todd Froelich may have hurt his truck as well. The Dodge Rampage going to need a tow back to the pit area. Meanwhile, we're up for our next race, Bigfoot and the Boogie Band. But before then, Army's with Eric Meeker. Well, you know, you're going to be in the finals. You came to this sport with this sponsorship hoping to win a world championship. You might just be able to be the lead guy in this points chase when you leave here. Hopefully we will be. Uh, when uh, WCW Motorsports jumped on as a sponsor this year, we knew they were serious about motorsports. They're involved in other sports as well. Shows you how far this sport's really come, and I'd love to take a, a win here at the first race and then ultimately get that championship at the end of the year. Does it make any difference who you go against in a final? It's either going to be Bigfoot or Boogie Van. Both are tough competitors. Uh, if I had my choice, he said it'd be a tough one. I'd like to race Dan, but uh, Pam, she's a tough contender, too. This is going to be a good race right here. And it's going to be an all-Ford race as Pam Potter's in the Ford Aerostar. She made a couple of finals last year in that in that Van Army. Yeah, as a matter of fact, her husband is the crew chief on this vehicle. They put a real good motor program together. They know they can step up and run with anybody. they got just as much horsepower as anybody that get in the lane next to them, Dave. And, of course, the Fords debuting the new F-150 Bonnie Styles. You can see Dan Runny coming to the line. Eric Meager drove this truck to the opening win at the RCA Dome, but now Dan Runny takes over as Rick Rice gets set to turn these guys loose. replay will show you she moves quicker then when they go over the first jump right here is where Runny can really put some horsepower down now he dials the horsepower in pulls the trigger over the second jump and literally leaves to the end so Runny will advance in that f-150 Dave's with him right now the defending champion steps out of the big foot for Dan Runny you made the finals but another slow start you had to get her off in no man's land yeah I did you know it's 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 a rough track to drive it's getting rougher the ruts are getting bigger you know it's it's just a hard truck or a hard track to start to play now just because it is getting looser. The Ford Bigfoot's doing fine. We put both our trucks in the final, so we're real happy. Bigfoot is the most dominant truck ever in monster truck racing. But over to show and shine area. Meager going up against Dan Runny and Army. These trucks are very even. Yeah, you can call this the battle of the blue oval bunch. They both come out of the Bob Tanner operation. Even it's kind of like the same thing the NASCAR teams have when you have a two-car team. They have a two-truck team. Everybody's separate. 
hand as even as you are maybe we'll get a chance to see who's the better driver but how about lane conditions meager has the choice he's picked the fast one it's the left lane he starts running into the right one yeah but that may not be such a big deal you got to remember the guy driving the Hulkster used to drive the blue truck he knows how it's going to react so he'll know how to adjust this truck i think we're going to have a real even steven race rick rice getting ready to give him the green light it's our final dan running and eric meager I tell you, I couldn't call it. It was literally a battle of the blue oval bunch. Who's going to be the winner? We'll wait for the official word to come down. I still can't call it. I don't know. We might have there to There it is. Where did we get running with the 482? That's an awesome run. And awesome is the understatement. As you can see as we take a look again, watch the start. Both Meager and Running lightning quick on the reaction time. They keep the back wheels on the ground through the second set of jumps, but watch Meager. He hits it first. But it's Runny who gets the wheels on the ground, gets the extra bite. He carries it all the way to the finish line. Army's down with Dan Runny, our pen to points winner. By two thousandths of a second, you're the man that takes a win. But I've got to be real honest with these folks. You came back to the pit area and asked us who won. It must have been dead close down there. It was real close. You know, you know, you know like that last race against Pam, you never pay any attention when you're racing somebody like that on who's on the other lane. You know, I had time I had to make up last round. I knew Eric was going to run tough. He ran the left lane all day. I'd been running the left lane. He threw me in the right lane. I had to slower time to time before. I didn't have a choice. The guys, I mean, a great crew, you know, take you back, pick you up, and tell you, hey, get your head together and let's go racing. Bigfoot Ford won it. And on the strength of that win, Bigfoot Racing Team and Dan Runney, your points leader is Eric Meager is second. The Dodger of John Frolick is third, followed by the boogie van of Palm Vodders. A whole host of folks tied at number five. Army's down with Eric Meager, our runner-up. Boy, it must have been close down there. Oh, it had to be real close. I think he got a, the whole shot on me, but it looked like we were making up some, some ground on him. Apparently, we just ran out of ground there. He told us that you, he knew you were going to be tough on the tree, plus you put him in the lane he wasn't used to. So he was going to have to get it on the start line and try to hold it off to the other end. Yeah, exactly. We knew we had lane choice. which plays a little head games with him, but uh, that's in any competition here. So uh, we came out. He knew we, he knew we were going to run hard. We also knew he was going to run hard. We're just trying to please all of our sponsors out here. Well, Army, I think we're going to see a corporate battle all year, but it was all Ford in round number one. Yeah, but the season's off. The Pinto Point chase is on, and it's going to be a great year for Thunder racing. Up and right now we truck. head back to round two racing in the competition area, and a good look at Dan Runney and the Bigfoot Ford, your current points leader, heading into round number two. He's going up against Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol, and Paul's no stranger to racing as well. A world champion mud racer, a very successful businessman, and an innovator. Earlier, Army took a look at Paul Schaefer's newest contraption. Paul Running Schaefer. the Bigfoot Four is going to go up against Paul Schaefer in a Monster Patrol. Boy, Dan Runny put a hole shot on that right lane tree. Schaefer, boy, did not have a prayer. Ford moves again into the next round. You know that Ford has not lost even a round so far this year. That's been pretty dominating. Speaking of dominating, what about the WCW Holster, our round one quick qualifier who finished second to Dan Runny. He's going up against the executioner of Tim Hall. You know, that's an interesting race here because both young drivers, and Mark Hall and Tim Hall, are the brother team out of Champaign, Illinois. Mark doing the driving is one of the most underrated drivers in the sport. These guys are a victory looking to happen. Will it happen today? I don't know. These four seem to be having a hot hand, but this Chevrolet's not rolling over on them at all, Dave. Well, they're on the way, and the Holster flexing his muscles once again. The WCW car crosses the finish line first. A 4.84, a good time for Eric Meager and Tim Hall and the Executioner. They're going to have to wait to race another day. You know, but there's kind of an interesting point here is we've got a top-end camera. I want you to watch the front of the truck on your left and to see if indeed his front tires did make contact, both front tires, with that second obstacle. We may have a disqual... No, I don't think they did. Well, the driver's side tires, so. yeah, the driver's side tires. Let's see what the officials do about this, but that should be a DQ run. Well, they're taking a look at the replay as we speak. You can see Eric Meager, a very concerned driver, Tim Hall, and a lot of the drivers getting around to take a look at this replay with the officials. Well, I tell you, the replay won't lie, and the drivers know that uh, if he was wrong, they're going to see it on the replay. And another look here. You can see the left front tires. They need to both touch the set of cars. They're outside the line. Special events people and track officials taking a look. They've made their decision. Eric Meager has been disqualified. He's standing by with Army. Hulk Hogan had to wait for another day to go into the winner's circle. Uh, Eric, 
the big question is about this tire right here. They're saying that this tire did not go over the cars on the end. Now, there's a little stake down there, and they're saying that had you gone over that, you would have knocked that stake down with the tires. After your pass, the stake was still up. They assumed you were out of bounds. Yeah, as, as it stands out right now, I mean, they've, they've checked the tape. The track official has designated the truck as being DQ'd. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I I feel I was over. I don't know extremely how far or, or how close the call was, but we're going to have to go with that call, and uh, I'm sure we'll check it out at the end of the race. But he's got to go against the support of Dan Runty, and I don't think it bothers Dabney. As a matter of fact, Kurt Dabney has always liked to beat up on the big guy. Let's see if he can do it now. Dave? Well, Dan Runny and Kirk Dabney, semifinals, who's going to be going against the Dodge? We know it's going to be a four. The question will be which one. The current national record holder and past winner, Runty, steps in the lane closest to us. The starter gets both of them in the lanes. Dabney's ready to go. Starter waiting patiently. It's a sight game. Both of them are trying to outside the other before they move into the final lanes. takes a win. He had a good bounce on the end. Kept it close to the ground. A 484. His number's not as good as the Dodge. We might be setting up a little drama here as the Ford goes against the Dodge in the final. Replay comes up on the screen. Dabney actually moved first, but he stayed in the air longer. Bigfoot got down on the ground. See, Bigfoot's making horsepower now in no man's land. The final launch and Runny bounces over the finish line to set up a Dodge Ford final. Dan, a 484 against Overkill. You're heading into the finals again. Dan, we're going back there. You know, it's it's hard to come out and do this. Well, I go oh, a lot of thanks to the crew. Ford Bigfoot's working well. Um, we got a lot of people behind us. It's just it's going fast and running so consistent we can't stand it. We're just gonna go to the finals and see if we can't pull another one out of here. Speaking of finals, that's what's coming up now. Time now to move to our final event. Dan running up against Paul Schaefer, and you got to remember this battle started out even before round one, with each team claiming the other was running hopped up fuel. Each lost a teammate along the way. Meager and the Holster was DQ'd for going out of bounds. Todd Frohlich couldn't make the call for the final four, but it still points to a Ford Dodge showdown. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something else. These people don't like each other. Okay, let's lay it on the line. This is a real war coming up. The first salvo has been fired in this war. Runty scored. Let's see what the Dodge can do with him now. Well, Team Bigfoot looks on as Rick Rice gets ready to turn him loose. Fred Schaefer and Dan Runny, today's Penta Points final. A 483. The crew's excitement shows that he takes a win. Schaefer drops off. He goes to a 506. So not able to put the horsepower down he wanted to. Watch the truck attitude over the first jump. The Dodge kind of noses down. Look at Bigfoot. He's still up in the air. Now no man's land. They're both picking up on the throttle. And Runty literally flies to the finish line. The Dodge touches down first after the second jump. Doesn't make any difference. The Ford is definitely on his way. Dan Runny of 483 as the Bigfoot Ford makes it two for two. And I, like I said, I can't really say a whole bunch. Bigfoot Ford's working good. Mac Tools has helped us out a bunch here this weekend. We did have some problems. I got a great crew and a great boss. I mean, I can't say enough about it. It's just been an outstanding weekend. I'm happy as I'll get out. Corporate battle round one goes to the Fords. Overall in qualifications, earlier today and a low qualifier at a 5-4-4 run he went the opposite direction watch this run by Dan Runty and Bigfoot so obviously the ramps creating some problems in qualifying Both earlier today giving Bigfoot the big lead over the Hulkster Rampage Barefoot and the executioner once again this is stop three we're in the ozarks in springfield missouri but now it's dan runty and the bigfoot ford out of st louis missouri and he will stage against kirk dabney in the overkill truck and there's a look at kirk out of fort wayne indiana up in the northern portion of the hoosier state big story is the big blue truck sitting next to him dan runty has not lost a round all year long he's your current point leader Old man trying to tell the story. Dabney's coming on him, Gary. Oh, and just by a fender. Only a fender and not particularly quick at 590. No, not the number the Bigfoot team was looking for, but what was really spooky on that run, Gary, was no man's lamb. And Kirk Dabney 
settled down and went after him. Runty left the starting line quick, as we'll be able to see in a replay. But, boy, when they got to no man's land, Dabney got real serious and started making up some big, big time. Here's the look from the crash cam as you duck. Here comes Dan Runty and Bigfoot. So once again, uh, Bigfoot had a scare. He's been unbeaten in every round so far this Penda series, but he almost got nipped right there. So Dan Runty will be uh, back for more competition. Which way that and truck we is going? will as we Getting ready now for the last race of round two. There is the Hawkster, Eric Meager. And he will go up against Monster Patrol. And Monster Patrol driven by Paul Schaefer. Both of these drivers have had an opportunity to watch the truck in front of them. They know there's problems on the top end of the track. Do you drive for the top end? Do you drive for no man's land? Do you drive for the starting line? They've had a chance to think it through. Let's see which one thought it through correctly. Well, it's the Hulkster. And that is a uh, actually a Ford truck. Eric Meager out of the uh, Bigfoot stable. They are second now in the point standings. Yeah, he goes to 580. That's not a bad number considering the situation. Well, coming up, we'll have Bigfoot against the Boogie Band down in the semifinals and the Hulkster against Barefoot. And let's go back trackside and visit now with Eric Meager. You guys are literally working for a living out there tonight. I mean, I don't. It, it's so spooky all the way down the track plus the shutdown area. Oh, everything's spooky from the starting line, like you said, to the shutdown area. We've got our hands full. This has got to be, without a doubt, the trickiest track we've been on in years. Uh, you got some soft spots, some dry spots. You don't know whether to check up or stay with it. Uh, long and coupled with the cars that are in your way and the suspension. We've got our hands full here tonight, and uh, it's going to make for some exciting racing. Well, the semis are coming up from Springfield, the Missouri. Conditions here in Springfield. As we are ready now for the first race of our semis, once again, Dan Runte and Bigfoot. There's a look at Pam Botters in the boogie van. One thing you got to remember, Runty has not lost a lap all year long. So he could be playing a little bit of psyche game with her, and these drivers are not above doing that. He's taking his time going into the lane right now. But Pam was quicker in the last round than was Dan Runte. All that really does is give her lane choice for this round. Oh, now that's what I'm talking about right there. A little bit of mind games. He took his time going into the light. She's sitting there with her torque converter and her RPMs up. Got a little bit nervous. He goes to the next round with a 587. She goes on the trailer. With a red light. The psych job's exactly what that is, and she knows, and I guarantee it'll never happen again. But Runty laid into the lights, making her a little bit nervous. As soon as she saw any kind of movement on that tree, she left. Wrong time to go. So you can see where she red lighted, and Runty takes it out the end. And he will move on to the finals. And once again, he has yet to be defeated so far this season. As we take a look at another angle off to your right, you'll see her jump right there. And she knows she's in big trouble as Runty will take the victory. And here's Dan Runty. Pam, uncharacteristic, made a, a move up there, but she said she thought she saw green. Pam's always quick on the light. She's one to watch. The Fort Bigfoot's been running good. She had lane choice. She threw us over there. We tried something different seen a red light and we left and just made a, a decent pass to get in the next round and the next round of course we'll have to wait to see who he will take on as Fred Schaefer comes on in barefoot and he'll go up against the big yellow Hawkster with Eric Meager Gary showing us that each jump has his own characteristics or personality. And earlier in the day, Gary had a chance to look at the second jump in the series of two here at Spring. And it also makes the drivers drive hard the whole course, Gary. You can't lope over that second jump. You've got to hit it a lick. Speaking of hitting a lick, look who's coming out. Barefoot, Fred Schaefer, Dodge Hemi in the far lane. He's going up against the Hulkster, the Hulk Hogan vehicle. Eric Meager doing the driving. Dodge Ford battle, the classic. Watch these guys go at each other tooth and nail. This is for the right to meet Bigfoot for the championship here in Springfield. Oh, good job by the Dodge. A little bit out of Kelter. They're still not hitting that second jump. Flush, Gary. A 539. Hey, he's found a good number there. A 539 should be quick in the evening so far. Well, on the replay, it was just a great reaction by Barefoot. Fred Schaefer got the whole shot. He won it right there as it looked like uh, the traction was the problem for the Hulkster. And Barefoot and the big Dodge Hemi will go on to meet 
Bigfoot for the championship. Let's go track side. Black, this is black, black and blue after a run like this. We're ready for the finals. It's blue against red. It's Ford against Dodge. It's Bigfoot and Barefoot. Of course, they compete with these big tires. They cannot transport these trucks with the big tires, so they have to change tires. Here's an interesting observation from us. Back now for the finals, under the lights here in Springfield. You hit the Dodge Ford aspect, it's also good here in Firestone. We got a race. Oh man, Bigfoot takes the win, Gary. Schaefer has to backpedal, a 5.22, quick in the evening, the final run, that's the quickest time. But Schaefer, on the right of your screen, as you'll see, not able to square up with that second jump. He's out of shape now. So Dan Runty remains unbeaten in Penda competition. Let's go down to Victory Lane and talk to Dan Runty and the team owner, Bob Chandler. You knew you were going to have a battle on your hands. You knew stepping into the name Bigfoot that you, you had some tough fill, shoes to fill. Okay, and this is the guy that trusted you and believed in you. Yeah, he is. You know, you got a lot of big shoes to fill when you come into this. He's got a good team, a good guy, a bunch of guys at the shop. Ford Bigfoot pulled it out. It's tough on a Penda Point Series. We just did the best we could. Uh, round by round, and I'm kind of fired up. And like I said, he is a great boss. Once again, in the uh, Penn to Points Championship, uh, Bigfoot opens up even more of a gap over the teammate Hulkster. There's Barefoot, Rampage, and the Boogie Van. Well, the big story is points lead by Bigfoot. You brought that out, but the Boogie Van comes up and bumps the Hall brothers out of that top five, so we can have a Donnie Brook before this year's over just to get into the top five. Well, the fans are fouling out of Springfield. This is the man that's responsible for you. Looking at Bob Chandler as he goes around to congratulate his new driver, Jim Kramer there, congratulating him. Gary, it's been a great night. Our congratulations to the Bigfoot team for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week. Trucks and Tractor Power is a production of Diamond Peace Sports. Before this event's over, let's see if he can live up to his words. Well, one guy who had it in the fours in qualifying was Eric Meager in the bright yellow Holster, a four-powered truck. Once again, that was back in qualifying, your fast qualifier for a 96. Samson comes out, going against Bigfoot, Ford against Chevy. Privateer, Dan Patrick right here, used to work for the uh, Bigfoot camp. He's out by himself now out of Ohio, out of the Buckeye State, going up against the kid that literally was that when he started to work for Bigfoot. Dan was over there. As the mentor, this guy comes over just a new kid on the block. Now he stepped up in the driver's seat. That would be Dan Runty. And, of course, Dan Patrick built many of these monster truck frames. He knows this sport from the ground up. Well, I'll tell you what, Gary. The kid takes the win, so he beat his mentor in that round of 491. And it didn't look like he was really running the truck that hard. Looks like the track is getting faster as well. We're seeing more runs in that four-second category. Here's another truck that potentially could do it. The execution of the Hall Brother team, they have definitely turned the performance corner. Mark doing a driving, Tim turning the wrenches. They could be players, Gary. Well, speaking of the player, it would still appear that Dan Runty is the guy to beat. He is unbeaten so far this season. He remains supreme in this competition. Here's Dan. Well, another lap down. These guys are still trying to figure some way to beat you. Yeah, we're the Ford Bigfoot's running good. We're changing a lot of things round by round, just adjusting for the track. This track's a lot different than it was the last race here. We've got a good crew. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. We're picking up time every round. We're just going to go on with it. In every form of competition, you hear about the drivers, the teams chasing the track. It is no different in monster truck competition. These guys are chasing this track this evening. The Ford takes the win out of the far lane. The Hulk with a four, another sub five second, 494. And it's like you said, they've not only chased the track, I think they've reeled it in. The Hall brothers, a good run, but not going to be a player. The replay comes up on the screen. The starting line shows the win here. Now the far lane settles down. See all four wheels on the ground. He's on the throttle picking up at 490 plus run. So Eric Meager in the Ford takes the victory. He has to be happy as he advances. Big question, can you or anybody else beat this blue truck tonight? You got the quick qualifying time. You know you can turn the number, but can you get past him? Yeah, our truck's running real good. We had a good qualifying pass. Uh, we felt like we were a couple tenths ahead of everybody. The blue truck was strong, but we came out a little faster. Hopefully, if we get in the final round, we'll be a little faster than the blue truck tonight. Get Eric Meager. We are ready. Now. As we get to the, uh, the semis, 
There's a look at the Rampage Dodge and the big yellow Hawkster Ford. And all that fiberglass is a Ford. If you're dealing with the team concept, what you're looking at is the number two truck in the Bigfoot team right there and the number two truck in the Dodge team. This is a corporate battle. Don't think for a minute. These guys don't even like each other. I'll be real honest with you. They just want to beat each other. And Detroit is watching this race as close as you and I are right now. Once again, as they stage, Dodge and Ford. Whoa, I couldn't see from my angle, Gary. Who won it? Eric Beaker, the fast qualifier, and he prevails here in a 494, but only by inches. Watch again how close it is at the finish. You got to remember the margin of victory is always one. In this case, it was one fender, Gary. Well, you can see how close it was right there, but Eric Meager will go on to the championship round here in Springfield. Let's go visit with Eric. Well, you just put Rampage away. That's got to make you feel good. That Dodge is a bad hombre. It is. The Rampage has been running real well. The Dodge boys are always right there. But uh, this big blue oval bunch here, we're, we're doing our homework. Uh, the lanes seem like they're loosening up a little bit, and the times are showing that, but uh, we got to keep ahead of everybody else. Well, he's exactly right. you got to keep chasing the track, as you said before, Gary. Well, once again, it's Ford against Dodge. We saw one set of teammates. Here are the other teammates on the Dodge team and the Ford team. Remember, I referred to the other team with no disrespect of the being the uh, number two trucks in the team. Now we're looking at the number one guys in each of these teams. Runty in the Ford. Buku horsepower. Motor setting right beneath the driver behind him. Same scenario for the Dodge. The only difference, you're running a big Dodge Hemi and Fred Schaefer's truck, which is closest to the camera. Not a lot of love between these teams. Not any love between these teams. Again, corporate America's watching it. They've got one win for the four camp. Let's see what's going to happen here. Spectacular, Dan Running, what of the boy was Fred Schaefer spectacular, and look at the crowd. Man, they are into it. Schaefer, that is just nothing but experience. A less experienced driver would have backed on the throttle and completely come over. Schaefer on the gas after the first jump, wheels it up, pulls the feet out of the water. Now he's on the throttle big time. He's got to keep it balanced, and that's exactly what he does for the second jump. Yeah, he had to keep his foot in the throttle to keep that rear end churning and pulling. And oh, what a ride Something for Fred Schaefer. Were you aware that he was taking a wild ride out there next to you? Honestly, no. It's getting so close and so fast here, pen to point series. That it's just getting tough. you got to run your own race, basically race the light and just go down through there. No, they said he took a real, real wild ride, though. I mean, all the way down through there, Ford Bigfoot Firestone tires. We got her done again. So it will be the Bigfoot teammates, Dan Runte and the Hulkster with Eric Meager coming up for the championship. Ready for the finals. Can that truck right there remain unbeaten? Bigfoot, Dan Runte leads the Penta Points Championship, goes up against his Bigfoot teammate, the Hulkster, Eric Meager. Meager had quick qualifying time of the night. He has been beat by Dan before. They're good friends, they're good competitors, but keep the word competitor in mind. Meager would love nothing better than to thump this blue truck in Missouri. you got to remember, these guys are in their own home state, so bragging rights is important here. World Championship Wrestling on one of them. On the other truck, the blue truck, you're going to see sponsors like you've never seen in racing before, like the name Microsoft. You see Firestone. You see Deflect Shield. All the major corporations getting involved in this sport because these guys can get you some exposure, and that's what it's all about. Right now, bragging rights, Gary Lee. You take the call for the final in Springfield. Runty playing some head games with his teammate like he did with Pam Botters earlier. Didn't work, though. Who's going to take it? Oh. oh, Big Blue. Bigfoot remains unbeaten. Dan Runty at a 4.93. The big question now is, can this guy go a year without getting beat? Replay comes up on the screen. Both good drivers move first in the far lane. But after the first jump, the Big Blue Bigfoot settles down right here. He applies the horsepower, gets it hooked up, launches off that second ramp, and takes the victory. So Dan Runty remains unbeaten. Well, atop the Penda Points Championship, here's your winner.
Well, as a crew, congratulations. We're going to have to call him the unstoppable Dan Runte. Man, this is an awesome. I don't think I've known anybody to go this far without getting beat. We're doing great. Like I said, i got a great team. I can't say enough about a Mac Tools behind us. Ford and Firestone, all those people. But like the guys that got here, I got to, I got to give them all the credit. Every time we needed a little more, Gary, Celine, he gave me a little more, and the Ford Bigfoot went out there and just did an awesome job tonight. Thank you. Well, our congratulations as they start spraying. I'm not sure that's champagne. Oh, that's, that's just a super shooter. A little, little water gun action down there. As we take a look at the uh, current standings in the Penda Points Championship, again, the gap widens between first and second. Barefoot's third, Rampage, and Pam Botters is still fifth in the boogie van. Let's take a look at the final run one more time from the crush cam. Better get ready to duck. They don't get any closer than this. Bigfoot thumping you right now in Springfield, Gary Lee. A great night of racing. The big question is, is anybody going to be able to catch this big shot? The temperature in the upper 80s is a hot, humid day here in Springfield, Missouri, in the Ozarks. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds for stop number five of the Penda Points Championship. Now, over a 100 years ago, the most wanted man in the Ozarks was the outlaw, Jesse James. Today, the most wanted man is Dan Runty, right there, the driver of Bigfoot. So far, he is unbeaten. He's won every round in Penda competition this season. Now, history tells us that over 100 years ago, when they put a bounty on the head of Jesse James, it was a former gang member, Charlie Ford, that gunned him down, shot him in the back. Will history repeat itself? Can Dan Runty's gang member, i.e. his teammate Eric Meager, gun him down? Or will it be somebody else? Well, no matter what happens, Army Armstrong, Dan Runty is a marked man. Well, being a marked man is one thing, and being on top, they always say there's only one way to go. But what you're looking at right now could really be a posse that's going after this guy. The big question is, when is the streak going to end, and where is it going to end? Now, you relate back to Jesse James of Missouri. I'm going to say it's more like Custer. Which one of the Indians are going to get him? That's the question. Going back down to highlights in the first round of qualifying, Eric Meager and the Hulkster threw the first punch. In fact, he laid down a low qualifying ET of 4.83. There you go, guys. That's what I can do. What can you do? Well, Dan Runty in the Bigfoot truck took that challenge, and right off the trailer, he laid down a 4.93, only one-tenth off. So the Hulkster would have the number one qualifying position out with the point total for the National Pin to Point Series showing the scoreboard. Bigfoot is literally reading a riot act to everybody else. Hulkster, Barefoot, Rampage, and the Boogie Van. Boogie Van being the only privateer in the top five. Well, there is a look at Eric Meager in the Hulkster. That is the uh, teammate to the truck that leads the point standings. That's the Bigfoot organization. There's Kirk Dabney out of Fort Wayne, Indiana in the overkill. Overkill the near lane. That's Ford in the far lane. The fast qualifier, the guy with lane choice, Eric Meager, takes the victory at 4.89. An overkill was there by virtue of being a fast loser in round one. So he will go to the truck Try and uh, there's a look at the line without doing any dry hops, and I think it worked. Well, the competition continues. There's Dan Runty, who ran a 4.93 in round one to defeat the Monster Patrol. He also qualified at 493, so he has been very consistent this afternoon. Now, the boogie van with Pam Botters ran a 533, the fast loser to Rampage. You got to remember, though, the last time these vehicles ran, Dan played mind games with her. Remember, he psyched her out, made her push her into a red light situation. So, watch Pam now. She's trying to take control of the starting line. She's not going to go until she wants to go. Well, this has been a day of upsets and strange happenings, so let's see what happens if she can uh, out psych or defeat Dan Runty. Uh, she runs him good, but Runty is like he is on a mission, Gary Lee. It's awesome. A 493, and you can hear him swinging the throttle when he went over the finish line. That is three straight 493s today in qualifying round one and round two. As we take a look again, it was all Dan Runty. The boogie van incidentally went a 532, but Runte remains unbeaten this season in Penda Points competition.
Both drivers leave the start good, but man, the second jump, Bronte is just out and muscling his way to the end. Semifinal pairings now will have Eric Meager against Mark Hall. That will be the executioner and uh, Tim Tesmer against Dan Runte in Bigfoot. And now back to the pit area. Dan Runte, I tell you what, I know it's not easy, but you're making it look easy. We've had a good race season so far this year, Army. The truck's working well. Ford Bigfoot's pulling a lot of wins out of here. You know, this has always been a tough weekend for us. We've come here and, and found out that maybe it ain't, isn't so bad. We're just going to have to wait and see. We're going for another win again. All in the executioner, and he will have the task of going up against Eric Meager in the Hulkster. And, of course, the Hulkster was the number one qualifier earlier today. But you got to remember, Mark Hall has developed his confidence. We're seeing a new executioner team. Uh, this race is not a giveaway, believe me. Mark Hall now believes in himself and his driving ability. Eric Meager in the far lane is good, too, but we got to wait and see. A mechanical problem for the Ford for the Hulkster as Eric Meager pulls off. Your fast qualifier has been knocked aside. Mark Hall goes a 532. That will put him into the finals. So, do he call it an upset or not? I think the guy has worked his way to the win. Well, obviously, there was a problem with the Hulkster, and uh, right in no man's land, Eric Meager elected to pull off. So, obviously, a problem, but that will put Mark Hall in the final. You know, Gary, this is the first time Mark Hall has ever been in the final. We got another angle coming up on the replay, and I really can't tell what went wrong. Whatever happened, happened in no man's land, because Meager opted not to even attempt that second jump. He just drove off the track. Meanwhile, the lane closest to us, Hall running his own race to the final for the first time ever. Let's see how they fare. Obviously, some kind of a mechanical problem with the Hulkster as it is being uh, pulled off the race course, but Mark Hall has to be very, very happy to make his first final uh, we'll ever. We'll find out Army. soon enough. But first of all, let's go back to the pit lane to Army Armstrong and follow up on what happened to Eric Meager. What happened out there? Oh, actually, I'm going to over the first set, got the truck into high gear, and I think I took the input shaft out of the transmission as soon as we shifted the highs. RPM went up, and uh, the MSD rev limiter looked like it did its job because the motor was definitely up there. It's a tough way to come back on a hook out to be towed off the track, but uh, at, least, uh, we, at least we made it to the semifinal round. Maybe next time we'll make it all the way. So we'll go racing now for a right to go into the finals. Will it be that truck right there? Bigfoot unbeaten all season long with Dan Runty at the controls, or will it be the Hercules truck? One thing you can bet on, Hercules is going to put it on kill. Oh, what a read right out. He has won the race already. Hercules pulled right off. What? I have no idea what can be going wrong with these vehicles, Gary. Well, keep in mind, second place in the point standings is Eric Meager. He will not be in the finals, which means that if Bigfoot can win this thing this afternoon, he will widen that gap between first and second in the Penda Points Championship. So Bigfoot with a 5-2-0, Hercules DQ'd. Just like a mirror image of the last race, but the wind comes out of the right lane, the brakes comes out of the left lane. Looking now at Bigfoot coming right at you. Boy, I tell you what, nobody can touch this truck this season. You talk about being lucky. Yeah. Well, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Always remember that. These guys work awful hard. So watch the suspension work. Nose down coming off that second set of cars. And look at the suspension work. Well, let's go down and talk to uh, Tim Tesmer. Call. He is going on to the finals against Dan Runte. And Dan Runte has yet to be defeated this season. Here's Dan Runte. Were you aware that he was having any kind of problem at all? No, Army. I mean, that's something Kenny and Gary and Herbie and all those guys tried to drive in my head. Go out there, run your own race race the lights and go down through there the best you can you know you don't have time really anymore to pen a series like this we're going so fast that you got to run your own race and you can't worry about what's going on over there so can mark Hall Hall morning, but he'll be grinning in a minute mark Hall gets set for his first final and the executioner he will take on bigfoot and talk about a big task bigfoot unbeaten this season as dan runty prepares to stage the big blue ford 
Dan Runty, like you said, he's he's a sharp driver. He's a good driver, but he listens to people that have been around before. The kid in the lane next to him we're looking at right now, Mark Hall, the same way. These young men are the future of this sport. They both worked hard to get here, one in a Ford, one in a Chevrolet. slower than he had been, but Dan Runty wins it. He remains unbeaten, and Mark Hall goes a 5.23 in the executioner. As you take a look again at the replay, like he said, he doesn't race the guy in the lane next to him. He races the track. He races the clock, and he races to the finish line. Bigfoot remains unbeaten, pads the points lead in the Penda Points Championship. Let's go down trackside and visit with our winner. After a few congratulatory words from your older mentor here, Herb Richards, uh, this is a perfect season. It's never been done before. We're working real hard at it. Thank Herbie and Kenny and all the guys here. I mean, like I said, we got a great team. Fort Bigfoot's working well. Firestone tires are hooking up where nobody else is. I just can't say enough about it. I mean, we got a bunch of great sponsors. Mark, you know, is a good driver. That could have been the break he was looking for. It looked like he ran you hard down there. He did. He ran all the way down through there. Like I said, I don't pay a lot of attention to what goes on on the other side. It's just something you got to do. Go out there and run as hard as you can run every time you go in this group. Well, five straight in the Penda Points Championship. Obviously, that guy right there has a big margin over Hulkster. But notice executioner Mark Hall has knocked Pam Bonners out of the top five. And here is Mark Hall. As a quick loser. Monster Patrol in the far lane you're going to see is taking on a truck last seen at the RCA Dome. That's the Dungeon of Doom. And the new driver is Sky Hartley. But it's Paul Schaefer taking the win with a 5.24. Dungeon of Doom is going to come back as the fast loser of that heat. So let's take a look at how we look heading into round two. You have Bigfoot, Dungeon of Doom, uh, Barefoot and the Executioner, Monster Patrol and Rampage, and the Hulkster and Boogie Band. Enjoy all coming, coming to back around. It's kind of a happening. Speaking of a happening, man, so many times before, Dan Runcy and Bigfoot even up with Firestone and Ford. It's at a quick qualifying time of a 5.08. That should give him lane choice for a lifetime to run that quick. He's out of St. Louis, Missouri. He'll be going up against a truck in the other lane. It goes by the name of the Dungeon of Doom. The last time we saw this vehicle, indeed, was indoors in the RCA Dome. The bodies in these vehicles are rather unique. They're designed by a guy out of Winston, Missouri, by the name of George Link. This truck will be driven by Sky Hartley. And I tell you what, the motor located in the front shouldn't slow this truck down. He's shown he can run as we get ready for next round racing. Well, you know, you would think that Dan Runty would have easily put away that competitor, but that was almost an upset. No, he, uh, he ran him strong. Now, keep in mind, we might be setting a precedent here. 516 was the winning time. The replay is going to come up. The question is, watch the left, your left front wheel. It's his right. Does it hit the second set of jump cars? That's the question. It should. If it doesn't, there should be a disqualification. We're going to have to wait and see what the call is on that. Quick qualifying time, he took that right lane. That may be the story of the rest of the day. Here, round the right two, lane. Sam Vodders and Boogie Van taking on Eric Meager in the Hulkster. Now, Vodders is coming back in here by being a quick loser in the previous round. Eric comes in, he took a win in the last round. He's on a new WCW sponsor truck, the Hulkster, and the kids are really loving both of these vehicles. Girls against the guys, if you will, Tom. That Meager put a whole shot on that young lady. That was where the win came from. A 528, not the greatest ET, but he actually made it look good. As a matter of fact, that was one of the best looking runs we've seen out of I that right lane I all day long. So does Dan Runty in Bigfoot. He has yet to lose a round this season, Army. Yeah, but today he goes into the lane. He does not want to be in lane choice. Goes to Fred Schaefer. Let's see what's going to happen. Remember, the Dodge is a little bit longer than the Ford. Watch the first motion. Straight or down and forward. That's what we got to wait and see. Real hard on the right side. He tweaks a torque bar or something. Uh, Bigfoot, look at that, a 486. A good, strong run. Quickest of the day. Well, Fred's got some problems there in the front suspension, I believe. Definitely some damage there. 
Let's take a look at it again on the replay. Now, what happens with the transmission and the long wheelbase, this, the truck is locked in right now. There's no shifting. It is locked. It's on full kill. So it has to react as such. And it's just not consistent. That is a good running monster truck. They just got to get it tweaked. Well, he not only knocked the fender off, he did some other damage to that right side. Now, Bigfoot on the other side, basically, he just made a squat move, went straight the other end. All four wheels are on the ground. Look, you see on the right, the front two wheels are off on the Dodge. Well, let's see if Army can check. See if Army can check with Dan Runty. You knew Fred was going to run you hard. Yeah, he had lane choice coming out there, too, and that makes a difference. I mean, we've been running the right lane. Freddie been running the right lane. Ford Bigfoot just pulled it out of there again. The Firestone tires are hooking up unbelievable for all the rain we got here. Like I said, great team. I just can't say enough about them. It's, we're just going to keep going, and maybe we'll pull another one out of here. Well, it's awfully bloody to mention everybody, but don't discount the driver. Dan Runty's an excellent driver and is definitely part of the reason that Ford has so many victories. Next semifinal my final run, Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol trying, trying to make it to his first final of the season. And he'll be going up against none other than Eric Meager. He's driving the uh, ballistic banana, if you will, the monster truck circuit. He's a hired gun out of the Bob Chandler operation driving the Hulkster. Could be a race for anybody. Whole shot to the Hulkster. He hangs on for the win, Tom. That's just a good, clean, straight-ahead race. Yeah, and I tell you what, a 5-12, is, he didn't hurt the equipment. And the run, he doesn't look like he's beating and banging that truck. Everybody else coming out of the right lane is just getting shaken up terribly. If you watch the replay, he looks like he's out cruising, which is really the first smooth pass we've seen in that right lane today. You're exactly right, but that gets back to him studying the lane and watching exactly how everything's going to react. That's a good smooth, you know, for best, such a thing. Best landing I've seen on that right lane. Let's find out if we can figure out why Eric Meager is able to do that. Army? Eric, a 5-12, but the Chevrolet boys seem to be closing the gap on you Ford guys. Well, they sure are, and uh, along with the track conditions, I mean, we've really got a lot against us here, a lot on our minds. Like I said, uh, the only thing you can do is really concentrate and count on your equipment, and that's exactly what we're doing. Our equipment's doing the job for us. Speaking of which, there's some equipment the on the Midway that would certainly fit. Well, we're up to the final now. It's Dan Runty and Bigfoot taking on Eric Meager in the Hulkster. We'll this, see if Dan can do it again. This is going to be a good run. Eric Meager has been coming after Dan, coming after him. They're good friends. They run out of the same shop, the Bob Channel Racing Operation. The trucks are maintained it's out of the same operation, but they are completely different teams. So you're going to see some real races. The track is good for both trucks. The wheelbase of the Ford are going to fit right in the starting groove. So you should see some good racing here. The guy that leaves the starting line quick is going to be the guy on the other end. What gets me, though, lane choice, Runty has chosen the left lane. He decided not to go to the right lane. That surprises me. Well, well it worked for him, whatever he did. Well, it seemed like the right choice. There's Dan Runty. Whoa, look at the number of 479. That is quick, Tom. That is low ET of the meet, and it puts him, of course, at the top of the current standings of the Penda Point Series. Bigfoot at 7,600. WCW Hulkster trailing at 53.20. Barefoot, Rampage, and the Executioner all behind them. It's close, but no cigar for Eric. Army's with our winner. A perfect season. You have not been beaten one time. I even think you go through the cafeteria line in front of everybody. Can you keep it up? I don't know, Army. Today we had some some problems out there just lane wise i mean it's just it was a hard hard track to pick lanes on thanks to ford and msd blower drive services putting some some major support behind us as far as working on our stuff and working with us on our stuff to find the best and we're just i can't say enough about you know what's going on and i'm not going to sit here and tell you i'm going to win all these either <laughs> all right congratulations to dan ronty for a banner year he's having and that just about wraps things up for army armstrong i'm tom rivers we'll see you on trucks and tractor power next week trucks and tractor power now, this would mark the first time a husband and wife would qualify for a round of eliminations and their fate was not to get much better as Mike Vodders goes out after the first round, suffering the same fate as Alan Pizzo. First round blues. This blue is a Bigfoot blue with a 531, Tom. And Vodders, well, wife, the boogie van, the only woman driver on the circuit, and she'll be going out in competition out of Hagerstown, Maryland. But Pam will draw none other than the old Bigfoot himself. Yes, folks, your current national points leader, Amanda, has not been beaten all year long. 
has not lost a race, has not lost a round. Dan Runty out of St. Louis, Missouri, will line up against the other lady in the other lane. Well, you hope that, that uh, she's going to be able to give Dan a run for his money, but I'll tell you what, if I were lining up next to Dan Runty, I'd have to be thinking, he boy, is, yeah, He I, is in the zone if there is such a thing. No question. Yeah, I'd call that the zone. <laughs> <laughs> I call that the end zone, what I call that. Look here, 477, and she ran a strong run. He goes to 77. And that 477 is the low ET of the race so far. Well, we get ready for our next pair of monster trucks, Paul Schaefer and Fred Schaefer. Let's send it down to Army with Dan Runty for a strong, after a strong run in Bigfoot. The license plate kind of tells the story. Number one truck, USA, Ford, Bigfoot, unbeatable all year long, a 477. Is there going to be any stopping you at all? The truck's running great. Uh, Got to thank Ford Motor Company. Fords are the best. We know it. We're just out here to prove it. Eric's truck's running good. The two trucks are real consistent. A lot of guys are coming up here. I mean, they're all getting a lot tighter. We got to watch what we're doing, and we got to keep getting tight. We'll see what happens. No, no doubt. Well, like you said, no, the Hall brothers have got their mojo working, <laughs> and they're using it with everybody they can find out there right now. Well, we got a new driver in the Dungeon of Doom. It's Eric Tack. He's taking over the driving chores for Sky Hartley. And we're talking about the fiberglass body. Eric, of course, from St. Louis, Missouri, but in that very uniquely uh, fiberglass body of the Dungeon of Doom. The theme body style seems to be a fad coming this way. You're looking at the Hulkster, and, of course, he's got the big belt and the big arms and everything that all the kids can identify with. You know, this could be something the sport needs to look at. There's an identity thing here, and a lot of the drivers are saying, well, this doesn't look like a truck or what have you. But then again, uh, what about the safety factor? Are you blocking the view of the driver that normally wouldn't have? This is something that the rules committee, MTRA, is going to have to sit down and look at real hard because nope. there is some sponsor money coming from this direction, and that's what all racers need. Boy, Army, it looks like the Dungeon of Doom needs, uh, well, more horsepower for one thing. Definitely going to need some horsepower. Eric Meager, a 488. What do they say? If you're going to be the man, you got to beat the man. Well, Eric Meager is the showing man. He is the man. A gunfight. We would know only one's going to walk away. That's the name of this game. Who's he going up against? The boys in blue out of St. Louis. I ought to name this thing the St. Louis Blues because everybody that goes against him winds up singing the blues. Dan Runty on an unbelievable run this year. But you can't take anything away from the Monster Patrol team. They're reeling this team in. Monster Patrol, the privateers. Runte's involved with some corporate involvement. So let's see what's going to happen here. Chevrolet versus Ford as both drivers very cautious about working into the starting beams, Tom. Well, Dan Runty's going to be hard to beat on this, but we'll take a look and see if Monster Patrol can do it. Let's watch. We're playing hanger nade. We wouldn't have been close on that one. Dan, Dan Runty in Bigfoot runs a 4.72. You know, the whole thing is the Monster Patrol of Schaefer's is running strong, too, but a 4.72, you just can't beat it. Let's take a look again. You'll see how the truck settles down right here. See, when, both, when all four wheels hit, yeah. it pulls straight. Everybody else is having trouble when those front tires hit after a wheelie. Nah, these guys just pull like it's on a chain or a rope. It'll pull them to the other end. Pull straight through. Looks great. Let's have Army check with Dan Runty as he climbs out of Bigfoot. Big number, Dan, a 472. That is just fast. It's getting faster every pass. It's actually getting scary fast. If you ever heard anybody say that before, it, the truck's doing great. BDS. They've helped us out, like I said before. I just, I can't say enough. I don't even know what to think anymore. The truck's getting so fast. Ford's your best, and that's all I got to tell you. Well, you got to believe in your product, and Dan Runty certainly does. Scary fast is the term he used as Mark Paul and the Executioner and Eric Meager and the Hulkster pull up to the line for our next run. I don't see what could be scary about taking something that weighs 10,000 pounds and flying <laughs> it through the air like an airplane no. and landing like a bomber. Yeah, just another day's job. Ford and Chevrolet battle on the line. The Hulkster, he'll represent the Ford camp. That'll be Eric Meager doing the driving. The Hulk Hogan sponsored vehicle, and the kids really seem to like it. We were talking earlier about the different designs. Uh, this is another one of the creation that comes out of the Winsville, Missouri GTS fiberglass shop of George Link. He'll be going up against a more traditional looking GMC Hall Brother GMC truck uh, in the lane closest to us. Boy, look at that. Eric just, it wasn't 
necessarily a fast run, but it sure looked like a Sunday cruise at a 5.65. They make it look so smooth, the reaction of the truck. Again, what this truck does the same thing Bigfoot does. Watch it. When all four wheels touch down, it doesn't dodge left or dodge right. Watch what it does. It just goes straight, and you can't ask for anything better. Now the question is, who's going to get lane choice in this next round? Because both trucks cannot run out of the same lane. I know that because I read the rule book. <laughs> well, we'll find out. But first, we're going to send Army down to check with Eric Meager as he opens up his hatch and jumps down out of the WCW-sponsored vehicle. Eric, the Hall Brothers team, you can't take a thing away from those guys. They run you hard every time, don't they? Oh, they sure have. They're coming on strong, really, really competitive. A lot of good trucks are running exceptionally good here today. Uh, track conditions, lanes are... Uh, a big importance here. It's hard, it's hard to tell, from, I'm sure, from watching. But uh, this blue truck we're up against next, uh, we're definitely going to have to work on him, too. He's been, he's been beating us up all year. <laughs> Eric's crew chief is Jim Kramer, who uh, is also a driver himself, a championship driver of Monster Trucks, giving him a little advice about the final. Dan Runty in Bigfoot versus Eric Meager in the Hulkster. And these guys are not here for the fun of it. They want to. It's like an old-time slapping contest. I'm very serious. These guys are good friends until right now. They're both back in the pit area. They're psyching themselves up. They have not made eye contact in the last 30 minutes. They're going to race. The blue truck wants to beat the yellow truck. They're just as bad, the yellow truck wants to beat the blue truck. This is what it's all about. Woo! Yeah. What a race! Boy, that was a that was a nice run on on the part of both drivers, but Dan Runty and Bigfoot carries it off with a 4.73. Blue by you on the other end. Man, what a run by Runty. And Eric drove him a good race. This, these trucks are just about evenly matched. Look how similar they look yeah, on the exactly. run. Yeah, exactly. Both trucks handle the same. Hey, tip of our hat to the guys in the blue team. They're looking good. Yep, it was a uh, margin of victory was just by a nose. And Dan Runty the winner. Here's Army with him. Did it again. <laughs> Guys, real quick, what, that, you know, what do you what do you say? Perfect season. Hadn't even been beaten in a heat race yet or a lap or anything. It's perfect. But how do you keep the tempo up? It's Fords, that's all I can tell you. I mean, it got a great great group of guys. Trucks are going out there running good, both of them. I mean, semifinals, you know, you come out of that two tenths of a second different. You can't say any more than that. I mean, all the way back to the shop, it's just great. Ford Motor Company, BDS, all them guys. And well, Her Herb said he taught you everything you know. That's pretty close to it. <laughs> That's why he called me old man. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Army. Thank you all. Congratulations to Dan Runty, Crew Chief Herb Richards, Bob Chandler, the entire Bigfoot gang. Take a look at the Pen to Point Series current standings. Bigfoot at 8,900, followed by the Hulkster, Barefoot, Rampage, and Executioner. That'll wrap it up for Bloomsburg. For Army Armstrong, I'm Tom Rivers. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Check. You know, you just never know what's going to come out of this guy's shop, Bob Chandler in St. Louis, Missouri. Where did Stinger come from, and where's Hulkster? Well, Hulkster, WCW wants actually three bodies shown in this series. Now, we can do two, two body changes. This is our body change for the year. This, this truck will be for the rest of the season. Eric will be driving this one. So this was Hulkster with now new, new body panels. Just new body panels. The same truck, same driver, same basic name. It's WCW, and this is this is the old Hulkster. That's right. So according to the rules, the driver can change trucks or names one time during the season and keep his driver points. So Eric will be in this truck the rest of the year. That's right. Well, Stinger is not the only new truck on the Penda Point Series to show up here in Canfield. Check out Bill Haslett in Super Truck 20. Now, this truck is owned by Paul Schaefer as a monster-sized version of the NASCAR Super Truck, but unfortunately, Hasselt went up against Dan Runte and Bigfoot in round one, and Super Truck 20 was trailered early. Let's check in now with my colleague, Army Armstrong. The name Dan, Patrick, and Samson, synonymous with a winning team, and that's exactly the way it's been. However, they have had their peaks and valleys throughout the year. As a matter of fact, last time we saw the Samson Chevrolet, he was at Bluesburg, Pennsylvania, a little bit out of shape over the second jump. Nose in on some new side. Front end of the truck collapses. Patrick fighting for control, completely demolishes the truck. We thought we wouldn't see him again for the rest of the year on the pin to points chase. Then lo and behold, we come into Canfield, Ohio, and who do we see? Dan Patrick with a brand new combination here. And you're gonna have to explain this from Ward 1 for me. I don't understand what's going on. Well, there was no way we could repair the truck in time to get it here. And our obligation is for all this pin to point series this year. So we opted to lease a team. You know, it's a team that's kind of been out here, but with the position we have and chasing the points and stuff, we just leased the whole team. I'm just a shoe this weekend. But, uh, 
Um, you know, it, I think it's going to work out pretty good for us. And then when we come back in Indianapolis, we'll have our Samson truck back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, you have seen the truck before. As a matter of fact, it's running under the name of the Dungeon of Doom. This weekend, it's Samson. Top five qualifiers, once again, Bigfoot Dan running no that surprise. one of the uh, second guns out of this playoff. Dan Patrick in his monster truck uh, for rent advances into round two after a Todd Frolic in Rampage stalls on the line. There's the time for Fred Schaefer's barefoot. The wildest ride in round one, Alan Pizzo in the far lane against the Stinger. And his problem came in the shutdown area. Hang on, Alan. He gets his foot back in it. Nice save for Alan Pizzo. Alan, you literally just have to run them on kill, don't you? That's the only way you can run out here, Army. These guys are on kill every pass they make, and these two corporate sponsorship teams are hard to compete with. We're just out here on a limited budget and trying the best we can with what we got. And this is living proof of that nice save by Alan Pisa. We're coming back with round two competition from Canfield, Ohio. We take a look at Alan Pizzo's predator lining up against the guy that has been just unbeatable so far this season. Well, he hasn't lost a lap all year long. It'll be Dan Rundy out of St. Louis, Missouri, driving the awesome Bigfoot truck. Pizzo had some problems in the... Uh, previous round trying to keep the truck straight in between the jumps. Let's see if they've been able to tighten this truck up where it will go straight. Pizzo still a little bit tight on the starting line, willied over the first jump. Bigfoot takes the win with a 497 and Gary, he made it look easy. Dan Patrick and Sampson minus the muscle down to the bone. Now the the fiberglass cosmetics of this truck limit the visibility of the driver, so he's getting used to not only how little he can see out of the truck, but how the truck actually handles. Let's go trackside now to Army with Dan Runty. You know, it's strange in the past nobody would touch that right lane, and here you're just dialed in on it. Yeah, right lane's working good for both the trucks here on the, on the Ford team. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Both these lanes are going away a little bit. We're having some problems with them. You know, it's just getting tough trying to decide which one you want to go to now. It's just a matter of playing it out and hoping Firestone tires keep biting the way they're doing. We'll go on down through there. Take a look now at uh, Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol. He is staging against Dan Patrick and the Samson truck. Now, Schaefer is uh, really making some moves this year. He's settled down. He's constantly running in the four-second bracket. Dan Patrick has been around the sport of monster trucks and pulling for many, many years, driving the Renner Racer team tonight. Uh, Schaefer, a uh, salvage operator out of northern Indiana, been around all year long chasing the points, but let's see if he's found the combination he's been looking for. Paul Schaefer against Dan Patrick. Patrick made a good move. Schaefer trying to muscle him. Oh, a good run, but I think it was it was that green and black truck. Paul Schaefer takes the victory by just about two feet at a 520 ET. 520 is a good number. The replay is going to show you that the uh, bone truck made the move first. Well, watch Schaefer settle down right now and start really putting horsepower to work. Well, right now it was side by side, but there you can see the margin of victory just by about a wheel. Let's go down trackside and visit with Mitchell. Paul Schaefer. You're watching Kenny Bernstein on the drag race series. He's the best. Uh, here's a crowd favorite already. Brand of the circuit, the Stinger truck. Eric Meager on board, part of the uh, Bigfoot organization. Now remember, the points stay with the frame and the driver. The body's just cosmetic here. This is the truck we saw earlier in the year as the Hulkster. Meanwhile, Botter's in the far lane. Botter's is using this as an R&D session, and whatever he was trying didn't work as the Sting stung, Gary. Eric Meager, a 5-0-2 in the WCW Stinger. As Bob Chandler uh, checking out the Bigfoot truck, we'll come back and visit with Eric Meager when we return to Canfield. Welcome back to Canfield, Ohio, the northeastern portion of the state for the monster truck Thunder Drags. And uh, Eric Meager was just victorious. Let's go down trackside and visit with the driver of Stinger. 
there was ever a run where the chassis looked perfect, that was it. The first jump, it didn't look like it came off the ground at all. That's right, Armory. We've been doing a lot of work here. Uh, we're trying to get the truck dialed in. We came out qualifying. I believe we qualified second. That pass felt really smooth. These guys are making the adjustments as we go. So far, everything seems to be working real well. the final three. You see the pairings there. It is Ford against Dodge and Chevrolet against Ford as we're down to the final four here in Canfield. The first pairing will have Eric Meager against Paul Schaefer. Now, some people tell you that's a stinger, but our crew chief tells us that's the flying croissant body style. If you look at the back of this thing, <laughs> you can't argue the logic with you there. Meanwhile, on the back of this one, you got a big old tall wing, and Paul Schaefer says, really, the wing is functional. It helps to stabilize the truck as they jump in the air. you got to remember, they're jumping 20 and 30 feet in the air on each of these runs. Four to the left, Chevrolet to the right. And the winner will go to the finals here in Canfield under the lights. One of the larger fairgrounds in the country, boasting one of the largest county fairs in the country. And a lot of good street rod shows up in this part of the country. A lot of hot rodders up here. This is Ohio. What do you expect? There's your Chevrolet, and there is your Ford. What we're doing, we're working late into the night. These guys run alcohol for fuel, so nobody's in a hurry to get to the line because the longer you run the motor, you're going to get a little bit more heat in it. More heat makes more horsepower. Then you race. Just that like that. All Stinger, all Eric Meager, so one for now in the final. And if history uh, can be read, it would uh, indicate that the other Ford should also be in the final. You're exactly right, Gary. And remember, the win here came out of the lane that all the drivers have said was the bad lane. That's the one that's got the drop off to the right. Coming right at you, and you can see it was the whole shot for Eric Meager. Look at the difference in altitude there with the Ford in the left lane, the far side. And let's go down and visit with Eric now. Here's Army. I got one thing to say to you. That was a perfect tree. Oh, exactly. I knew as soon as, as, soon as I took off, I knew it was going to be close. I really wasn't looking for the red light. I wanted, wanted to really stay with it all the way down through there, get a quick ET for that final round. I actually had to lift a little bit, so I know the time doesn't reflect it, but, man, was it a good light or what? <laughs> I think he's a happy uh, camper with that run. As we take a look at his teammate, there's Dan Runty in the undefeatable Bigfoot Ford. And look what lane Runty's in. He picks the right lane, too. He'll be going up against Schaefer in the left lane. The left lane, there's poles over there. The right lane, there's drop-offs over here. This is not going to be an easy win. Look who's watching. The entire Bigfoot crew is standing outside Schaefer, their hauler. Schaefer was worried about William. The air is cooler. If anything, he'll make more horsepower. That could be a definite problem for him if they did not tighten that truck up. go up against that driver right there for the championship here in Canfield. A 495 for Dan Runte and a big wheelie. Here it is again, the far lane. Watch the big red barefoot dodge and that is the wheelie that Fred was concerned with. Yeah, it did exactly what he did not want it to do. Not only wheelie, it bounced off of the rear wheels when it got up. That's how high it went, Gary. So it's going to be an all Ford final from the big foot stable. Dan Runty, now watch how smooth the old pro is. Now the question I have is who's going to get the run in this lane in the final because both winners for the final came out of the lane. And remember, the guys were saying this is the bad lane. I don't believe it, Gary. Well, I think that Runty had the fastest time, so he should get lane choice. Should make for an interesting final here in Canfield. Let's go down and talk to Dan Runty. Starting line either pays dividend or bankruptcy in this sport, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, it's got to go out there and cut a good light. These guys are all running tough. If you don't go out there and do it, it's going to bite you, you know. I don't know if Fred went out there. I don't really know what happened. It's another thing. You don't have a whole lot of time to pay attention. We're keeping it together. We put the two Fords in the finals, and we're going to see what comes out of this one. Hey, all, part, crowd, please are all the action. All right, it's Dan Runte against Eric Meager, Ford against Ford. Look at that. Meager gets the right lane. I wonder if that was his choice or did uh, Runte want that left lane? I don't, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. These guys will play some poker with you here about what's good and what's bad. But right now, 
Only the strong survive. The flying croissant in one lane and the blue bandit in the other one, if you will. And once again, Runty has yet to be defeated in any round of competition this season. For the whole year, yeah, nobody's beat him yet. But this is the guy that could do it right here. Whoa, Runty's out like a rocket. And Runty continues that incredible win streak. Man. Runty takes the victory in that left lane of 491. Dominance is a, not a good enough word for what that truck is doing to this sport. Well, I'll take a look now at the uh, far lane. A great light. I mean, Dan Runty cut a terrific light, and he kept the momentum up, and he takes the victory. Once again, Dan running in victory lane. He's with Army. Dan, eight in a row, you know, just... This has got to be the most awesome thing in motorsports that's happened in many years. It's an awesome team, Army. The Fords are running good this year. Third time in, third time in eight races, got thrown in a bad lane. It's got to say something for the truck. Firestone's helped us out. Blower drive service, MSD Ignition. A bunch of great sponsors have been behind us. I mean, we can't thank those enough, but I also got a great bunch of guys. And we'll just keep this string up as long as we keep going. I'm so happy. And, of course, Ronte has the big advantage in the point standings, as you can see. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Oh, now here's to find a excited. different angle, a different slant to the Pin to Points Championship. But the story this season has been the same week in and week out. The total domination of this truck right here, the big blue Bigfoot of Dan Runte. In eight races, he's unbeaten. That means he has won 32 side-by-side -side rounds of competition. Well, make that 33 as we advance into round two here at Canfield. I realize it may be the best truck. It has factory backing, a great support team. But the guy in the cockpit can make a difference because Dan Runty does not beat himself. He always cuts a good light on the tree. He never red lights. He's always steady. Who can beat Dan Runty if he doesn't beat himself? I don't know. But here's my colleague Army Armstrong with some highlights from qualifying and round one here in Canfield, Ohio. Well, the big highlight from qualifying was a 492 by the big blue truck of Runty. Everybody kind of expected it. But when the truck settled after the second jump, something happened that could have spelled disaster for this team. Runty had some problems with the truck. Actually blew a tire out, Gary. Well, Runty flattened the right rear tire on that pass, and uh, he has to help the crew. It's a big job to change a tire on these. In fact, with the tire sizes, they have to change both rear tires so they'll match for handling purposes. You're exactly right. The tires are match pairs, and uh, don't do one of anything in this sport. You do two, and each one of these tires weigh around 1,000 pounds, so no easy task, Gary, if you will. And Dan had to have the combination. He took on Fred Schaefer in round one. Fred was the slowest qualifier. That's why this pairing came up, but Fred pulls a big wheelie, was DQ and out of bounds, and the measure goes to Dan Runty. Army talk with both drivers. You knew he was going to cut the tree on you. Yeah, Fred always comes out. He does cut the tree good on you. We lost a tire in qualifying, you know, one of our good Firestone tires. We're back to a set that's not quite cut as good, but we're working with it. We're going to have to do some changing on the four Bigfoot. We're just going to go back and see what it does and try to work our way through this thing, get over it. But not a problem for Fred Schaefer just getting hooked up to the dirt. Now, there's a look at Eric Meager. Now, Eric is the teammate of Dan Runty. He had some problems in qualifying as well on this pass. Singer qualified fourth on the run. Following the run, Arnold is down the pit lane to talk to Eric Meager. What you're looking at is an oil pump that's just been located in the support vehicle for the Sting truck. Now, after the first qualifying run, Bob Chandler's crew chief came on the radio and said, we've lost oil pressure. Eric Meager immediately brought the vehicle back in. They took the bottom of the engine off, and that's what you're looking at right there. The oil pan's completely off the engine. They have located the problem. They have the piece of equipment to put it back together. The big question is, will they get it back together in time to make the first round of elimination? Remember, this truck is number two in the national points chase. Well, Meager would make it out to the line to take on Tim Tesmer in Hercules. The Hercules was good enough on this run to come back as the second fast loser. And Meager would take the win in Stinger. Now, here's another now look at Pizzo. We want to take a look uh, at another wild ride. Todd Frolic in Rampage in the near lane. Dan Patrick and Sampson in the far lane. And Frolic almost hits the wall. As he's trying to get this car shut down, it's a long shutdown area, but almost into the fencing. 
Well, Patrick became the second truck to uh, DQ in round one out of that scary far lane. He's, of course, leasing this uh, Dungeon of Doom truck from Bob Chandler, and we had a comment from Dan after that run. Dan, kind of a spooky run out there. Is your vision impaired at all by those side pieces? Well, it is at the staging lights. Um, but when I get focused down a track, I'm okay. Um, it, it's not what I'm accustomed to, but, you know, we're working around it. Tell me about that run. Well, I wheelied pretty good off the first set. Um, I was kind of thinking he might wheelie and have to get out of it, so I kind of stayed with it. And um, usually, you know, kind of they're inconsistent, and I was just trying to make a consistent run, and I got a little too bit, too bit loose the other end. I got a little close to that concrete. Other action now from Rizzo. Well, we go into the next round of competition as Bigfoot goes to the starting line. He'll be going up against the Hercules truck. Rampage against the Super Truck number 20. Predator against the Stinger. And Overkill the Executioner. That'll be the round out for this round, Gary Lee. Tim Tesmer and Hercules against Dan Runte and Bigfoot. There's a look at uh, Tim uh, from the Buckeye State of Ohio. Did not travel too far to be here this weekend. And he has the uh, an enviable task of taking on the so far undefeated Dan Runte in the big blue Ford. You know, what you're looking at is a classic example of the factory racer against the privateer. And that's not taking anything against anybody. Dan Runte works just as hard as anybody out there. But uh, you got a, a, a top end and a bottom end to the spectrum. And that's what you're looking at here. A guy on a fire side pulling all the money off his hip. The guy that's going to take the win is the corporate check. Well, of course, there's no ill effects there from the tire problem we saw in qualifying. They changed the rear tires on Bigfoot, and he went through round one and now has advanced to there. You take a look at Eric Meager. Talk about horsepower. The big four, the Stinger body on that uh, vehicle, and he will be staged against the Predator. There is a look at Alan Pizzo. Pizzo travels the circuit. His father's a chiropractor, and when the races are over, he visits a lot of the drivers. A good run for Pizzo, but not good enough. He almost got that uh, wall over there as Eric Meager takes it at a 507. Well, I tell you what, uh, we've seen a lot of tough landings here in both yeah, lanes. They're really hitting hard uh, after that second jump, and I don't know why. Uh, maybe you got to set a truck up that way to go straight. You got to give the straightness away for the impact on the end, Gary. Well, there's a look in slow motion of that uh, the impact on the landing for Eric Meager. He has ample uh, space to get her woed. And then we take a look head on now at the Predator. Again, a tough landing for Alan Pizzo, but he has come a long way just this weekend. He's made great strides to uh, compete with the uh, the heavyweights. You see how close he got there to the uh, outside of that lane as we take you back trackside with Eric Meager. Well, one thing for sure, you know you're going to get a race out of that Predator kit. That's right. We got our hands full with Predator and all the other competitors here this weekend. Let's face it, we're halfway through the, the season, and everybody's out running strong here this weekend, and we're looking out for everybody. Sunshine of Canfield, Ohio, for the uh, Monster Drags. There's a look at uh, the Stinger Ford as we get ready for the semis. Three Fords and a Dodge here in uh, Ohio this weekend. Well, you look at the WCW Stinger combination. He'll be going up against Dabney and the... Uh, overkill truck. Dabney running a real underslung chassis in the truck, a privateer, and it, this seems to work. Dabney's one of these guys that when he's hot, man, you don't want to mess with him, but he's always experimenting, trying to come up with the right combination. You never know when he's going to jump up and slap you, and that's exactly what's going through that driver's mind in the other lane. This could be the jump. Well, the guys that are on top know what put them on top, and they stay with the one that brung you, but uh, the, uh, the privateers are always struggling to find uh, a little extra measure of competition. to Stinger. A problem, though. A problem for Stinger. And look at that. Kurt Dabney's going to take the win and overkill. A 524. Something happened to Stinger. Exact ET he ran before. A 524. He's consistent. The Stinger made the move first. He cut the tree on overkill. Look at that. He made a good move on him, but when they settled in no man's land, something went away on the Ford closest to us. It's not over till it's over, and Kirk Dabney keeps a foot in it and pulls out the victory right there. You can see the margin of victory for Kirk Dabney. He has to be excited. He's with Army. A burnout of the Rampage Dodge, but uh, hey, Eric Meager did not cut the good light. After all, red lighted. He's with Army. Well, they say you live by the gun, you die by the gun. <laughs> That's exactly right. Live by the light, die by the light. Uh, we had some problems. Training was uh, going away on us, as you saw in the past. We knew we were going to have to get a good jump. Uh, we tried. It didn't work. But uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. 
Well, now we have Dodge against Ford. There is the big blue Bigfoot Ford of Dan Runty has yet to taste a loss this season has won every round of competition. He goes up against the Black Dodge Rampage. And you know this guy has got Runty in his crosshair. Just a win here can make your whole year if you're from the Dodge camp. Well, everybody at this point has that big blue truck in the crosshairs. for you right there is a good run too he had him at the tree had him in no man's land it was all dodge oh my what a big victory for todd he has to be ecstatic he's with army uh, ford loses to dodge here's dan runte dan todd said it was so close down there he had no idea who won that race it was a close race army i mean it was right down there the wire got a little crossed up there in no man's land as you call it and had to lift to get the front end back down to get it back to the second set. It's just a chance you got to take. We'll be back later. We'll get another one. So for the first time this season... Over his uh, Bigfoot <laughs> teammate, then it was Barefoot, Rampage, and the Executioner. You know, Dan Runty had his first loss of the season, and Gary had a chance to catch up with him a little bit earlier to talk about it. The question had been, wow, can he go the entire season without losing a round? Now, going back and looking at that defeat... To the, to the rampage, it looked like maybe he got the whole shot. He looked like he drilled you at the light. Yeah, he did. You know, he come out a little harder than we did at the light. The, that was a little different track conditions. I mean, we were having problems hooking up on the line. We sat and spun. His truck actually left there. He's running a different transmission. The Ford worked good all day. I mean, it just came down to one of them deals where we didn't get the traction we needed off the line, and he, he pulled it out of there. Right now, it would appear you have a big lead in the point standings. But just a couple of miscues on your behalf, and your teammate's going to be right there on your heels. Yeah, Eric's a person you got to watch all the time, too. I mean, he's right there. He's knocking on your back door. As a matter of fact, he said, me at the last, said to me at the last outing, if he could take it away from me, he wanted to be the one that would do it. You know, he didn't want to see somebody else take it away. He wanted it. Round one highlights now from Canfield. Bigfoot and the Monster Patrol. Now, in this event, Bigfoot would take the victory, but the Monster Patrol would come back as the fast loser. There's the 489 for Dan Runte. A new truck on the circuit appearing here in Canfield, Deal Wilson and the Virginia Giant, and he has the unfortunate task of taking on Eric Meager and the Stinger in round one, and that victory would go to the four out of the uh, Bigfoot stable with his 484 deal would go back to the trailer dan patrick who no doubt inspired the monster patrol situation goes down to mark hall in the executioner but patrick would make it back as the fast loser after this pairing there's the 510 for mark hall welcome back to canfield fairgrounds here in northeastern ohio for the monster truck thunder drags gary lee and army armstrong we take a look at Eric Meager and the WCW Stinger, and he will uh, line up against Bill Hazlitt in the Monster Patrol. Hazlitt's a new kid on the block, Gary. First time we've had a chance to see him has been here at Canfield. I'm kind of impressed with him. He's driving Paul Schaefer's number two truck. Speaking of number two truck, I don't know if you call this a number two truck or not. It's a second team truck out of Bob Chandler's operation driven by Eric Meager. So Chandler, as you well know, is a guy that started this whole sport 20 years ago. Well, if it's a team truck and a second truck, a lot of guys like to have that second truck in that stable. Ready for the launch. And this should be Meager off the line. In fact, he does because of equipment and experience. Hassel, as you say, new to the uh, course. That's quick time of the night, a 4.79, Gary. That's awesome. Well, once again, you take a look in the near lane. The Stinger gets the good jump at the light. And he stays smooth. Look, everything settles down. Now he's making horsepower on all four wheels, goes to the next jump, flies to the finish line. You can't ask for a better run. The guy is almost clock-like. Well, he takes the victory, and he's down with Army. 
You know, you're doing such a good job driving. Everybody knows if they don't get you on the starting line that they're not going to be able to handle you. That's right. This truck's really coming out hard. Uh, real tribute to the guys back uh, in the pits here. They're making the changes. They're really uh, coming around. The changes we're making seem to be working, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll make our, our sponsors proud tonight and put ourselves in the winner's circle. This Samson expert. That is the old Dungeon of Doom truck. It's been leased for the weekend by Dan Patrick, and he'll be staging alongside a former teammate, Bigfoot and Dan Runte. Bigfoot and the Tooth Fairy in this round, if you will. <laughs> well, there's a look at uh, Dan Runte out of St. Louis, Missouri. He won everything to the last outing when he got knocked out by uh, the Dodge of Prolick, and there is Dan Patrick. And Pat Patrick uh, has built a lot of these trucks. Yeah, exactly. Patrick in the Renner Racer in the far lane. We called him the Tooth Fairy. And then Runty, if this kid had been born 100 years ago, he'd been a gunslinger. He's that cool. Well, he's going to take this victory uh, without working up a sweat. But as we're watching this action, there may be a problem back in the pit area. Let's go back and check in with Army. Every time the Bigfoot team takes a win and comes back over, we do an interview with the driver. But while we're interviewing him, something happens. Bob Chandler runs over and takes some kind of a black box. Now, Bob, real quick, I'm going to grab you. You run over and take some kind of a box out of the truck while we're interviewing the driver. What are you doing here? That uh, box is, is measuring the pressures of the shock through its whole cycle of this race. We have a computer in a truck that's, that's showing the cycles when it's running, and this shows pressures. Well, we're going to make some changes down the road on the truck. Boy, it's tough to compete against the factory-backed teams when they have telemetry like that. You're exactly right, and I just figured out why they're running so why those trucks handle so well. They can read all the shocks, and when you're dealing with shocks, look, you got four on the front, each one, four on the rear. You're dealing with 16 shock absorbers, Gary. Well, there's a look at Fred Schaefer in the uh, Dodge Barefoot entry, pulling alongside Eric Meager in his Stinger Ford. Can they keep the front end down? That's the question. Well, they've added weight to the front. They've changed gears on the uh, the Barefoot Dodge. Let's see if anything works against Eric Meager. Meager late to stage in that uh, near lane. playing hand grenades somebody was close I don't know who it was a 483 for the Ford and a big wheel stand for the Dodge here it is again coming right at you the problem they've had all season long they cannot keep the front end down to keep the horsepower hooked up on this barefoot Dodge man they've done everything from adding dead weight to changing gear ratios they're just making a ton of horsepower gear that has been his nemesis all season long you see the impact on the landing it's strange yeah. thing you go racing and you get beat because you're making too much horsepower. It just doesn't seem possible. Well, they've tried uh, several different uh, measures, like changing gears, adding weight to the front, but nothing seems to be working. And right at the very end, he was edged out by Eric Meager. Both trucks, nose over in the attitude, diving at the finish line. There's Alan Pizzo in the Predator, and Pizzo will go up against Dan Ronte in Bigfoot. So let's see if Bigfoot can get back in victory lane after getting dethroned the last outing here at Canfield. You know, Pizzo's been on a roll here, and uh, Bob Chandler, you talk about a hands-on guy. You can say what you want to about this guy, but that's why his trucks stay on top, is he keeps him so involved in it. He checks the computer. He's checking temperature now. It's just amazing what you got to do, but that's why you stay number one. Whoa, Gary, a red light on a Bigfoot team. Alan Pizzo will take the victory a DQ. What did we say earlier about the guy Dan Runty yeah. never beating himself? Wow. Well, hey, and you can't take anything away from Pizzo. The red light tells it all. He doesn't lie, and it doesn't have any favors. He just moved too quick. He knew that Pizzo was coming in on him. He knew Pizzo was going to cut a tree on him, so he did what he had to do. And a big upset with the oh, roll up and you can tell he's happy, but the guy that really put himself on the sideline is Dan Runty. Good race, just cut a light quick. I mean, it happens to everybody now or then. Yeah, it does. I mean, I went out there, we're trying to, looking at the next round, trying to lay down a good pass, you know, trying to get a lane choice and just left a little early. That's you, all I can say. You gotta race a race one lap at a time. Yeah, that's just it, and I forgot that that time. That was my fault and nobody else's. After winning eight straight events, he has lost in the last two semifinal rounds. Oh, my, the champion 
somewhat depressed right now as it's uh, it's a tough situation for the entire team. And speaking of the team, Eric Meager had a stinger problem. The battery exploded after the last run. They should have no problems getting a new battery back and be ready for the finals, which we'll have for you when we return to Canfield, Ohio, here on Trucks and Tractor Power. 10 of the 10 to points championship. Alan Pizzo against Eric Meager. There is Meager in the stinger. That is a Ford against the uh, General Motors Predator. You really can't tell uh, what makes these vehicles are because of the fiberglass bodies. No, but you can tell we're going to have a new winner tonight. Neither of these guys have gone into the winner's circle all year long. They've been close, but nobody's made it to the winner circle out of these two camps, Gary. Well, Alan Pizzo immediately goes into the lanes because his vehicle is hot. Now, there's a rule that says when one driver stages, the other driver has to go to the lanes. He can't burn him down, if you will. Meager staging and backed out of the lanes. Pizzo's telling the flagman or the starter, get him on the starting line. I am not going to move. I am hot. I want to go racing. A shot there of Ken Kohler, who is the uh, crew chief for Eric Meager. Eric stage the run itself all Eric Meager yeah but look at the Predator Meager takes the win he was the first the other end but I told you about the heat problem in that Predator camp that's why they staged early we're gonna have to wait the, the WCW crew they yeah congratulations they were first the other end but I think they're gonna get caught in a technicality here their driver did not stage when he was supposed to well he pulled in then but, backed out exactly and that's when the Predator started pointing to the starter telling him to get on the line I'm hot don't burn me down. And that's why this rule is incorporated, and it's a good rule. Right now, it appears that Eric Meager has won here in Canfield, but uh, we're still not getting the official word. In fact, it's still being discussed right now. And he walks over to uh, sign some autographs. There's Alan Pizzo. They shake hands. We'll come back and sort it out. Eric he's, he's Meager is very up. unhappy. He said I have four. On the fourth one, you must. Eric Meager has been disqualified. No, you... Now you guys can dispute that call, uh, but that's the way it's going to stand right here. That's, that's Alan, rules are rules. We live and die by the rules. We just got word on a technicality. You are the winner of this event. You went up in stage. He rolled through the stage and beans, so congratulations. You're the winner. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And... I was up there to stage and I motioned to the starter that he rolled through them lights twice. I knew before we left that he had done that and I was trying to motion to the starter to tell him that, you know, he is already out to begin with. So you knew what the ruling was. You were just not going to move till that light went green. Exactly. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, the discussion continues down in the pit area. Talk about the highs and lows. Meager had yet to find victory lane all season. They had the trouble after the semis with the battery exploding. They changed the battery, appeared to have won, and then they get DQ'd for the rules infraction. Gary, he won the battle, but he lost the war. So Alan Pizzo takes the victory here in Canfield, Ohio. So for Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. And once again, that man right there, Eric Meager, disqualified. Alan Pizzo takes the victory. So long from Canfield, Ohio. The measure of a champion is not how he acts when he's on top, but how he reacts when he's been knocked off the pedestal. If you've been with us each week on Trucks and Tractor Power, you know that Dan Runty's had a phenomenal win streak. Eight straight events. That represents 34 side-by-side -side rounds of competition. Until event nine, he was knocked out in the semis and again knocked out in the semis in round 10. We've talked a lot about how Dan Runty did not beat himself. He always cut a good tree. He never red-lighted. However, he was drilled at the start in the ninth event. He red-lighted in the tenth event. I have to ask, is he in a slump? Is stress, pressure getting to Dan Runty? Well, if you're going to be in a slump, now's the time to do it with a huge points lead in the Pendant Points Championship and only three events to go. Now, here's my television colleague, Army Armstrong. Well, of course, the Virginia Giant will go up against Bigfoot. That's a tough draw for uh, the first time outdoors. Uh, you're exactly right. Uh, like I say, Dale definitely is a strong runner indoors. This is a whole new ball game coming outdoors. And he told us that. He said, this is a learning curve for me. Yeah, and you don't want to go up against this guy, Dan Runny, after he's been knocked out the last two rounds of competition. Ferranti, of course, won eight straight before he got knocked out in the semis in the uh, ninth event and red-lighted in the tenth event. So he's hungry to find victory lane.
And now we're looking at the pairing with the Rampage and Stinger. Singer, of course, is a teammate in the Bigfoot organization. Uh, his team driver, Dan Runte, just won his round. He's standing by now with Army. Dan, you look at the track, it actually looks dusty, but really the, the characteristics of the truck is running in mud. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's a hard surface here, and when they put water on it, it really gets greasy, so that's making it a tough, tough track to judge, you know, after... After it dries up and we get it dug up, it, it really turns into a pretty good track. That pass there, we just slipped on top, a little loss, a little time. We'll just see if we can, that's good enough for lane choice. Well, you see the mud being kicked up, and there you can see the mud on those uh, big tires. So it's a very slick racing surface here in Canfield. Yeah, but just like you said in the opening, you got to remember this is a pulling track. So they're used to getting it packed real hard. There's Rampage, the near lane, Stinger, the far lane. Hey, we got a race. By whatever such a slight Might not margin. Be over. Uh, there for a moment, he locked the brakes up, trying to get that thing slow. There's a 507, a good run for Eric Meager, but he had all kinds of trouble in the shutdown lane. Yeah, the uh, ISO camera is going to show us. Uh, really, the, the run itself is almost uneventful. He did a real good job. His kid's awfully smooth in the truck. The chassis works, but the problem came right here when he came back to correct it, Gary. And I told you about how slick the track is. And all he could do was stay on the throttle, and then when he saw where the truck was going, he locks it up right there, just does brush the left rear of the Rampage truck. No harm, no foul, and here is Eric Meager with Army. Smooth driving, young man. Oh, thank you. I had my hands full there. It was definitely a wild ride. Uh, it appears that they're trying to keep the dust down here today, and they've been watering the track down. The track's been so hard, and the times are reflecting it. We had our hands full. So far, everything came out all right. I don't know what the call was. We're going to go find out, and hopefully we're back next round with the WCW Motorsports. And look how muddy the sidewalls are on that tire. Yeah, they were that's a, a 78 Blazer. <laughs> and I knew he was going to hit the ground, too. Every time he go up in the air, he always hit the ground. Ready for the semis now. There's a look at a truck that can get some good air. There's the Stinger, Eric Meager. He goes up against his teammate. Bigfoot with Dan Runty. This is going to be interesting because a lot of people, as you see the pairings come up on the score, on the board, a lot of people think one of these trucks is going to roll over for the other trucks because they run out of the same basic operation. And folks, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen. These two guys are racers. Bob Chandler's given both of them the green light. If nothing else, they want bragging rights to go back to St. Louis with. You're going to see a good race here. Of course, Runty wants back in victory lane. Both stage now for the launch. Runty's got it on kill. Oh, good. He's in trouble. Battle, but Ruddy hangs on. No, he doesn't. He's upside down. Dan Ruddy in the shutdown area. It got upside down. Of course, the uh, cloud of dust now obscuring our view. Now we start to see the uh, inverted truck as the crew members are running over to Dan Runty. He got in trouble in, in the shutdown area. Right lane, Gary Canfield caught him. He got over the lip. Here the emergency crews heading that way. And there's the damage to the fiberglass, uh, the doghouse, as the crew now talking inside the uh, cockpit. The helmet is off. He is okay, but obviously he is stunned. He obviously is stunned. You can hear the crowd reaction in the background. What a violent rollover for Dan Runty. A terrible weekend here in Canfield. Let's go trackside to Army. Well, Gary, as you can see, they're immediately taking him over to uh, the medical staff. Herb Richards, his mentor, is on his left side. The medical staff's with him right now. So the fire department's right here to hose everything down. The uh, safety equipment work. Dan's all right. I'm going to try to get a word with him real quick. Dan, can I speak to you real quick before you get to the medical guys? Just a second. Do you have any idea what caused it to move like that? It just I hit the second ramp or hit the second ramp, trying to pull it back in, you know, run a clean race. The truck was out of shape over the first ramp. Had to stay in it knowing it was Eric, and when it went up in the air, it just kicked it sideways, and we are basically done when it come down. Just tried to drive back under it, come off the edge there, and it hurt. Okay, let me get you in there with these guys. Thanks a lot, fellas. Good luck to you, Dan. Thank you. Gary, the replay comes up. Did you hear the last thing you said to Eric Meager? He said, concentrate on the next race. Always thinking about the next one. Watch the right rear tire here. What happens with only four pounds of air pressure? It digs in when he lands, see, and it's crossed up. Now he gets on the throttle, trying to pull it back around, being a four-wheel drive, knowing if any corner is going, if any corner touches, he can pull it back. It was too late. He hit that infamous drop-off at Canfield. 
and went over the wall. Safety equipment, though, doing uh, the job required, the roll cage, the harness, the helmet, the seat belt, so the driver is okay. We'll come back with more from Canfield. Welcome back to Canfield, Ohio. This was just moments ago as they clean up uh, the aftermath of the wreck involving Dan Runty and Bigfoot. One of cosmetic damage to that truck. Yeah, the roll cage uh, kept its integrity. The driver standing right there, all the safety equipment, the Simpson helmet, and everything did exactly what they were supposed to do. RJS and Simpson make good safety equipment, and we're glad for that. The Bigfoot, but it's final time. Two guys looking for their first win prior to the finals. Army caught up with Fred Schaefer. I've been out in front a lot of times. My truck's wheel standing. We had a lot of trouble. We got so much power with this new Dodge Ram. Uh, we've been working on the clutch, the shocks, I mean, everything, trying to keep the front end down. Uh, power's not the problem. It's keeping the front end down and going down the track. I, I think we're on it this weekend. We shall find out as Fred Schaefer in the Dodge Barefoot staging against the Ford Stinger. Standing on the sidelines in a white shirt, Dan Runty. Looking at this final a lot different than the ones in the past. Dodge against Ford. They're staged here in Canfield. Both drivers in the lane they want to be in, Gary. Neither one of them trying to get into the lights real quick. Running alcohol for fuel, trying to build a little heat to make some horsepower. But remember, Schaefer said horsepower is not the problem. set up. Schaefer went nose up over the finish line. Meager dove at the finish line. You can see it right here. It's all in the chassis of the trucks. So the once Dodge, again, the nose up hurt Fred Schaefer. Exactly. The Dodge, by virtue of being nose up, actually killed the forward motion. Now, see the forward, it'll dive nose down right towards the finish line. And Eric Meager wins by that much here in Canfield as a happy Bigfoot crew. There's Dan Runty uh, over there with the driving suit on and the white T-shirt. Out of competition after the uh, grinding action as we take a look now at the point standings. Runty still with the big lead, but Meager is starting to close in. He wins here this afternoon. Here's Eric. Great job. Thanks, Kenny. How about it, pal? Great win. Oh, love it, love it. Being, being first is never nothing like being second. We were second too long. Our day was coming, today's our day. WCW, DuPont Automotive Finishes, Mac Tools, Firestone, Ford, everybody. They're all happy and so are we. <laughs> Trying to grab the microphone from you, Army. Four days of uh, constant battling in Canfield. There's your most recent winner as he walks over to sign some autographs. What's your name? Did you have a good time today? Right. Did you have a good time today? That kind of sums it up, doesn't it, Gary? And of course, there's the remnants of Bigfoot after it was rolled over in the shutdown area by Dan Runty. So our congratulations to Bob Chandler, Marilyn Chandler, the Bigfoot organization, and of course to Eric Meager, who continues to close in second place in the point standings. And once again, there's a look at that the accident that involved Dan Runty and Bigfoot in the shutdown area. But again, all the safety equipment doing its work, and Runty was able to climb out a bit dazed, but he walked away uninjured. Folks, never doubt it. It's real racing. Don't you doubt for one minute when you see a pin to points race, you're not going to see some big racing. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining MTRA Racing. Today from the Indiana State Fairgrounds, it's the Penda Points Championship, race 12 of a 13-race championship series. Each year, the Penda Points Championship culminates here in Indianapolis, Indiana. It is a clear but very cool and windy day here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. And behind me, the truck and driver we talked about all season long, Bigfoot and Dan Runty, that incredible eight-race win streak. But the last weekend they raced at Canfield, Ohio, the bottom fell out. In one event, he was drilled at the light in the semifinal round. The next event, he red-lighted in the semifinals. And then, of course, that huge crash. But will the bad luck continue, or can he turn things around and return to victory lane this weekend in Indianapolis? Here with more on this weekend's competition is Army Armstrong. We'll show well, you, you highlights coming up now. Bigfoot with Dan Ruddy taking on Paul Schaefer, the 12th fast qualifier, in the Monster Patrol. That is the truck nearest to the camera. But in round one, it was all Dan Runty and Bigfoot trying to once again find victory lane after losing the last two outings.
30 ET. Up next, there's the Stinger in the far side, and there is Hercules, Tim Tesmer. And this time, it was all the Ford of the Bigfoot camp with Eric Meager moving on with a 490 ET. For round Other highlights two competition. Now there's a look at Dan Runty in Bigfoot. He, of course, has clinched the Penda Points Championship, but would like to get back on the uh, winning track as he pulls up alongside Dan Patrick and Samson. Now, Dan Patrick used to work for the Bigfoot organization. He has since gone out on his own and does a lot of manufacturing and fabricating for other monster truck teams. Dan Runty, like you said, he's been the home run kid all year long and done a great job of driving that truck. But right now, the friendship they had goes out the window. It's time to race. Chevrolet against Ford, Ford the far lane, Chevy the near lane, Samson against Bigfoot. And to no one's surprise, it is Dan Runty in the big blue Ford. Now keep in mind that Samson, Dan Patrick, has built about half these trucks in competition here this afternoon. You're exactly right, and he actually makes a move on the Bigfoot truck first. Is it when the big blue Ford got in no man's land right here, it just started muscling the horsepower on the other end. Samson tells us, keep an eye open in 97. I've got me a new sponsor lined up. We're going after these blue trucks. Well, there's a look at Kirk Dabney in Overkill. Kirk will go up against the Stinger with Eric Meager. So a pair of Fords in second round competition. There's a look at Kirk Dabney out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Dabney won the strongest privateers on the circuit, runs a, uh, a custom fabricating shop when he's not working on his monster trucks. He can make them low riders just good as the tall boys. He can make any kind of truck he wants. Meager, uh, he comes out. What can you say about this kid? Bob Tanner has a good way of finding good drivers, and Meager falls right into that category. Quiet sword that lets his right foot do all the talking in the Stinger Ford in that far lane. But he knows he's got to drill Dabney on the starting line if he's going to take the win. A little late staging there on the part of Eric Meager. And Dabney actually got him at the light. Halfway through, he's got him gone. The horsepower in no man's land that we've talked about so often this season. A 4920 for Eric Meager. See, you got to get the truck to settle down, and these big Fords of Bob Chandler's crew, they figured it out. They'll give you the start line, but they'll take it away from you in the middle. That's exactly what Eric did. If you watch right here on a replay, at this point in time, the truck on the right's actually ahead. So he comes over the first jump. Now Meager settles down and does what he's supposed to do. The case of mating the horsepower with the suspension and the chassis. Meager takes the victory, and there's a look at Mark Hall, the executioner, and one of the two Dodge trucks, the Rampage of Todd Frolic, and they've been working all season long on getting the chassis to work, but speaking of the chassis working, let's go down right now and talk to Eric Meager. 492 does two things. It puts you in the next bracket, but it also gives you lane choice against Bigfoot in this next round. That's right, Army. We were looking for lane choice, and we've been in this scenario before. We've actually uh, beat Dan out going into the next round with lane choice, but he's come back to, seems to bite us all the time. At the end of the year, last race, I'd like nothing better than to, to have myself come out on top this time, at least once. Okay, it's the dumbest question I ask all year long. What lane are you going in? That is a dumb question. Well, obviously, he'll be going in the Dodge, right lane the here. Rampage and the barefoot. Oh, and on the front of the Stinger truck, I noticed a little doll of Hulk Hogan. No. Yeah, is that, Hulk, is yes, that Hulk, sir? Yes, sir, what? There's the Stinger truck, and he had lane choice, so uh, after that dumb question of yours that he didn't answer, That's right. he's but taking the right lane. That truck does look like the world's a flying croissant, if you look at it with that tail up. Like, that's one of the creations of the GGS fiberglass people out of Winsville, Missouri, who does all the fiberglass bodies for these trucks, and the uh, sponsorship came along with WCW, and they made some different looking trucks, and boy, did they make some different looking trucks. But this one is one of the new Ford body styles, and has been so popular for so many years, been a lot of blue Ford sold since Bob Chandler got involved in monster truck races, I guarantee you that. But right now, there's no love lost between these two guys. They may be teammates. And really, they run ident identical engines, identical transmissions. Their teams have been swapping information back, but right now, it goes in the hand of these two young men, Eric Meager and Dan Runty, who you're looking at now. Well, in the near lane, or actually the left lane, is Dan Runty. He has clinched the Penda Points Championship. His teammate, Eric Meager, will finish second in the Penda Points Championship. Yeah, but you throw all that out right now because we're racing. And all the numbers in the world don't count. It's the first one to the other end at this point in time. A little mind game here at the uh, at the tree. Late staging. Meager! Meager. All right, Meager took 
took him. Eric Meager took it. So the uh, the eight race win streak stopped, and now Dan Runty has lost three in a row. Meager cut a light on him. He moved first, but settles down in no man's land and immediately goes at 501. So Meager takes the victory. He'll go to the championship round. Here's Eric. What comes to mind when I say hole shot to you? Oh, <laughs> oh. I just draw a blank when it comes to that. I have my mind cleared. Uh, hole shot was where it was won or lost. You could tell there was a definite uh, change in lanes, not change, but difference. Uh, wasn't the time we were looking for, to be perfectly honest with you. We're not disappointed with it. We'll take it, move to the next round. But hopefully in this final round, you're going to see the time go down a little farther. Gary Lee and Army Armstrong, we are ready for the finals of round 12 of the Penda Points Championship. There is a look at Stinger with Eric Meager. Now, he will have the left lane, and there is the fastest one so far. He just backed up his fastest run ever at a 464. Fred Schaefer and Barefoot with lane choice will obviously take the best lane here, and that's the right lane. Well, and Schaefer's on a roll, too. He's got a lot of confidence. They found a problem in the truck. They solved the problem. Uh, Schaefer's coming into this thing about like a 16-year-old kid. He is really thinking positive right now. Can't take anything away from Meager. He's worked hard to get here, but right now I've got to give a nod to the Dodge boys because, like I say, they've turned their luck around. The trucks are handling, plus they got the good lane. Well, don't forget about how important momentum is to sure. carry them through the winter into next season because right now he is beginning to peak. Not enough to take a shot at the championship, but he's looking forward to next year. And the fact he can say, I did take a win on the... Uh, on the series, on the pin to point series. Dodge the far lane, fourth in your lane. Dodge, oh, look at that. All, all the way. Fred Schaefer, all Fred Schaefer. Let's take a look at the number. Look at that, a 466. And he was there. My, I tell you what, over in the Dodge camp, they're still going to be partying when the sun comes up. They've been looking for that win all year long. Nothing against Meager at history. They worked hard. But Fred Schaefer, it was destiny. He had this a lock on Whole shot, he has the chassis set, the horsepower in no man's land. He takes the victory, he's a happy guy. Climbing Browns out of here in Indianapolis, paper. abundant sunshine for the 13th and final stop of the Penda Points Championship. Now already, the Bigfoot team of Dan Runte and his teammate, Eric Meager, have locked up one and two in the Points Championship. But still, momentum is very important, just as important in the final race of the season as it is in the first. And here with more on today's competition is Army Armstrong. You know, rhythm or momentum is very important in no matter what sport you're involved in. Monster truck racing is no different. Gary, you're exactly right. And the Bigfoot team, they had that rhythm or momentum at the first of the year, which pushed them through all those wins. But Fred Schaefer with his Dodge came back and quit slow dancing and started rock and rolling and took a win at Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the Bigfoot team decided we're going to steal a little bit of old Fred's thunder. We're going to protest him. Well, they did protest the Dodge. The Dodge was deemed to be completely legal. So what we had before, if there was such thing as bad blood between this Dodge and Ford rivalry, real bad blood now. And of course, is Eric Meager, Hercules, Tim Tetzler. Eric Meager already has locked up second in the point standings. Meager and Tesmer are going to be waiting very, very patiently on the starting line because they realize that alcohol motor, the more heat you get in it, the more horsepower it's going to make. So they're not really in a hurry to go racing right now. Okay, now both drivers acknowledge they are getting rolled into the lights. Once again, highlight from round one. And again, it was all Eric Meager in the uh, Stinger Ford at five seconds even on the ET. And that was the first win from the left lane all weekend. Well, a win is a win is a win. If you got a whatever. Dan Patrick against Dan Runty. The DD boys are on the line right now. One in the Ford, one in the Chevrolet. And they've been there before many times. Both drivers respect each other. Gene Patterson, one-time driver for the Bigfoot team, working with Patrick, lining him up right now. Patterson has two new little baby girls, by the way. I want to congratulate he and his lovely wife. Dan Patrick, a builder of any of the trucks competing here this weekend. Like we say, Patrick Winterton has lined up a major sponsor for next year and feels he'll be able to step up and run with the uh, boys out of Hazelwood. Well, right now, it's Factory against Privateer, and Factory would take this round at a 4.89 for Dan Runte. The Bigfoot advances. Second. There's the 10 points championship this season. 
He'll take on Mark Hall in the Executioner. There's a look at Mark Hall. You know, a moment ago in the interview, they were talking about the sponsors and everything. You look at the decal on the side of these vehicles, and all these people help in some way or form for these guys to race. So if you see the, the decal on television and stuff, tell the manufacturer, support the product. You know, that's what makes it work. That's why they support these guys is for the exposure. So you see a decal, spend some money with that person. It helps everybody. This is factory backed against privateer. Yeah, but when the light goes green, the finish line doesn't know that. This time it's going to be a close one, but oh, oh. Eric, Eric Meager takes it. It was close through no man's land of 490 for Eric Meager. Hall was right there with him, man. He made a move with that Chevrolet. But what you're going to see in a replay is watch Hall closest to us, how he bounces right here. That's what cost him. The Ford had all four touching, and he was hooking to the other end. Oh, that's where the suspension and the chassis will have to work in tandem with horsepower. You need to settle that chassis down and make sure all four wheels are digging into that second group of cars. Exactly right, Gary. So Eric Meager will move on to the semis, and there is a look at Kirk Dabney in the overkill. And Kirk, of course, will have to stage against the big blue Ford. He is the only truck to win out of the left lane all weekend long. We told you earlier how we did it. And he's still up there very grinning ear to ear right now, I guarantee it. Dan Runty knows that Dabney's going to be tough with him. Like I told you, Dabney's an interesting fella. He does custom fabrication. He'll build a lowrider truck for you. He'll build a specialty street truck. He's really big into street trucks and sports trucks. Meanwhile, Dan Runty is a full-time monster truck driver, what he does for a living. Now, Dabney, of course, has that left lane. There's the right lane at Bigfoot. Dan Runty won eight straight events this season. And, of course, Lady Luck at that point looked the other way. He's had a terrible run the last three outings. Yeah, but when you know you're going to be national champion, hey, I, you know, you're going to, I'm already starting to look at color TVs and stuff like that if I'm in his <laughs> shoes. Remember, let's see what Dabney does this time, because, like I say, the last time he, he tricked the starter into starting a race when he wanted to. Now, Dan Runty knows the trick, too. He's going to go in slow, I'll guarantee you, in the starting line. He is not, he's going to make the starter think about his truck, not the overkill truck. Well, of course, Dabney's staging a little late. Yeah, there goes. Hey, moving with him. We got a race, Gary. Bigfoot. Bigfoot by not quite a length of a truck at a 493. So, Dan Runty will advance to the semis with that 493 as we look again it was close at the tree but in no man's land once again it was all dan runty and the big blue ford wins by almost a length so he goes to the semis and he's with army armstrong dan if you're gonna win the big one the last race of the year this is the one you got to go after and everybody is coming after you yeah you know everybody wants this race going out Kind of point series, the last race, like you said, Army. We're doing everything we can. We're just waiting on this round to see if we get lane choice or not. There is a little lane difference. Truck's working well. The Armstrong here at Indianapolis, Indiana, for the four-wheel fall classic. And we're down to the semis with a pair of Dodge trucks, a pair of Ford trucks. There is Todd Frolick and Rampage. And he goes up against the Stinger Ford with Eric Meager. You know, Gary, one thing interesting here, it's not only a war between manufacturers Dodge and Ford, but you see Firestone and you see Goodyear out here. They want to take a win home with them. So there's a lot of different people involved in this thing. We're talking about the uh, sponsor involvement in the past. Nobody wants to go out of here without a win. Of course, as you mentioned before our break, this would be the, uh, the challenge of the factory back teams here this afternoon. Bingo. Detroit's watching this race, I guarantee you. Left lane, the left Whoa. lane. Todd Frolic from the left lane. A 482. Frolic makes a move on him and backdoors him out of the left lane. All weekend long, that's been a no-no. Psychologically, Frolic just thumped this kid. Well, now we take a look at the teammates. Frolic's teammate, Fred Schaefer, barefoot, lane selection, far lane, the right side. And, yeah, they just flip-flopped from what we just saw in the, uh, the big foot forward. We got a race. Gary, we got a race. Barefoot takes a win. And look at this, the quickest ever, a 4-5-9. The quickest run ever in monster truck racing. We just witnessed it. It will be an all-dodge final here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Here's the fastest guy ever, Fred Schaefer. Come here. Fred, when you're hot, you're hot. I'm sorry your crew doesn't get any more excited than this. 
Army 459, uh, unbelievable. Boy, this Dodge Ram is great. Uh, nobody's ever running four sixes but us, and now now we have 459. How did how did you feel when she gave she was giving you hand signals coming up the return road that that's what you were running? I, I knew it was I knew it had to be good Army. It's unbelievable. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave here in third place Army. We ain't happy with the points, but what we are happy with turning the fastest times in monster drug history, and uh, we got something to brag about. Call it the Big Mo, momentum for the Dodge boys as they wrap up this season, head into next year. It's an all-Dodge championship round as you look at the Ford contingent. They're talking, but they'll be spectators as the Rampage against Barefoot for the championship here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. They're coming Dodge up in their garage, like Fred said now. Everybody needs a Dodge in their garage, Army. Well, the final Penta Points Championship showing Bigfoot the winner over Stinger, Barefoot, Rampage, and Executioner. Let's talk now to our seasonal champion. Dan, not exactly the end you were looking for. I know you want to go out in a blaze of glory, but you're going out the national champion. That's got to make you feel good. More wins than anybody else. You and the four teams have literally dominated the sport this year. The Dodgers had a good day today. You can't take that away from them. Yeah, they did. You know, they, they've run good all year. We come out with, like you said, the Ford team, and i got to give all those, those guys all the credit I can. I mean, they're great. We'll take another championship, give it to Ford, and come back next year. I mean, that's all we can do right now. They had a good day. We had a lot of good days. So we're champions, and they're coming in behind us. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody.